Make a weird face. Make a weird face. Full screen. Hey, yeah. look at these ugly mugs. <laughs> camera's up there. The camera's up there, yeah. <laughs> We don't, I don't usually do webcam stuff on my <laughs> channel, but Brandon was like, hey, we should do the webcam. Yeah, we should do the webcam. Um, welcome, everyone, to another stream. This is my brother, Brandon. Or Michael. Michael Mackert, as he goes by for his music <laughs> stuff. Uh, he's joining us again this year to do another Resident Evil playthrough. Last year, he did Resident Evil Director's Cut on PlayStation. That's only a, released on PlayStation, the that, director's cut. I was about to say Sega Saturn. I was like, wait, no, that didn't happen. That's I do want to do the Saturn too. version eventually the, of the original Resident Evil. <laughs> but yeah, he's uh, we got the Nintendo 64 controller here. Um, a nice teal version, actually. It's caught on my leg. So yeah, nice teal. But uh, yeah, he's going to play through the N64 version. Uh, have you figured out if you're going to do Leon or Claire yet? Yeah, I don't really care which one you do. We're not uh, doing both. I assume we're not doing both because he doesn't have all night. Claire is actually surprisingly harder. Leon's a little bit easier. Okay. But uh, Leon's handgun for some reason is more powerful than Claire's gun. You get you hold am more ammunition than, than Claire does for some mm -hmm. dumb reason. The game is more focused around Leon versus Claire, even though Claire is looking for her brother Chris, but they made it reverse in this one. In the first Resident Evil, Jill was easy, and the guy was hard. Now in this one, it's like they made it totally reverse. Leon's easy, and Claire's just like in between. <laughs> so, and actually, uh, we do Claire because I'm used to uh, Claire. Well, I mean, you you ran through both campaigns just recently, didn't you? Like within yeah, the last month. Yeah. Because yeah. we've been planning this for a couple months now, and uh, he's got a flash card for his N64, so yeah, he yeah. just fired it right up, and he's yeah. been dabbling with it for the last month. So, you know, we're not... Brandon's not, like, a super expert at, at this, as in, like, he doesn't go and play it every week like he used to 20 years ago. Yeah. Because you used to play these games religiously. Yeah, This yeah, is one of your favorite franchises next to Final Fantasy. Yeah, 20 years ago, um, you know, they had, like, in Nintendo Power, they had Six Save Challenge. And I would, I would play Resident Evil games so much where I got so good at all of them where Code Veronica, I beat saving six times, Resident Evil 2, saving six times, the first, actually on all the difficulty settings, six times, even part three. I recently replayed Code Veronica about a month ago also, got my ass kicked, saved a shit ton of times. I saved more times in, <laughs> when I first revisited the game 25 years later than I did 25 years ago. And then I played it again the second time, made it through saving four times. So it's pretty amazing how this get your brain rolling, and uh, once your brain kind of connects with the subconscious of the game, it's like everything just comes back. And so it, like there's some tactics that I've had to do a new strategies over in this one to kind of re, kind of re, uh, revise and everything. So. So, how long do you think this is going to take, Brandon? Do you think three hours, four hours, five hours for like a a someone who only just recently played through the game once or twice, as opposed to someone that speed runs it every day for a living? It probably should be like maybe three hours. Though. Okay, on my Hexen stream, I was like, it's probably going to take us four or five hours. People were like, nah, you you can do it in two. I was like, well, the, mm, Brandon hasn't played this in a long time. Well, the quickest that I. <laughs> Trying to be, I'm just trying to be realistic about it, that's all. So. Well, the fastest time I beat this game was two hours and ten minutes, and that was at my friend's house years ago. That was a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah, and, uh, but if I could beat the game in two hours and ten minutes back then, I'd imagine it probably, right now, probably be like, because time always feels longer than the gameplay time. Yeah. You, know, you play a game for two hours, you feel like it's four hours, even though you play the game for an hour, it's like... Oh wow! You know? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, don't jump in yet because I can't actually see anything. We'll uh, we'll talk. We'll respond to chat for a couple minutes before we okay. start. Yeah. And uh, so uh, we got Bonk. We got uh, Ronnie. We got Game Eagle. Breddit. Retro Simon. El Vaz. Sanctum. Michael. Uh, T Bone. T Bone is looking forward to this one. He told me that a little while ago. So. Uh, Carlos, what's going on, Carlos? Uh, hi, Austin Brandon, and happy streamers. Glad I came in for some horror fun. And yeah, someone had mentioned Patchy. You can oh, actually see uh, Patchy there next to Brandon. She's got the throne, whereas we have the cheap free chairs I found next to my dumpster a couple years ago. Bring it a little closer. 
Bring her a little closer. There you go. <laughs> she's, 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 just, she's just cleaning just herself. <laughs> she's, she chair moves. She doesn't care. Uh, <laughs> Come on back. Where are you going, Patchouli? Okay. <laughs> we got the uh, the Halloween set up here too. Uh, you guys can't really see it too well uh, normally, but it is there. It's lit and it's great. And we also got some delicious Halloween cookies here too. And uh, <laughs> how about the uh, the the cider? Oh yeah, since Austin's streaming, Austin has his own brand cider. You check it out. It's got Austin's uh, East Ciders Blood Orange Cider. Check it out. It's blown out. They can't it's, it's see it, out, but right. yeah, it is. It's by a brand that's named Austin. So was, was it's. Like, I've never seen that brand before. Gameplay and talks new item right here. <laughs> oh man, Austin looks so normal. <laughs> Hey, Society, thank you for that $10, man. Much appreciated, dude. Really appreciate it. Let's get a pay for Brandon's Taco Bell after we leave tonight. <laughs> Shiny Philistine, what's going on, dude? Always good to see you. I mean, I played the N64 version a couple times. It might not be the best version to play, but you have to give Angel Studios massive credit for managing what they did with the support. Uh, yeah, I think the most impressive thing about this port is, you know, the full motion video, having that, you know, coming up with the compression algorithm that still keeps the video looking good enough. The main game itself, like, it's nothing special. I mean, Resident Evil 2 is not... The Resident Evil games aren't that complex. It's like static 2D backgrounds for the most part with, uh, you know, polygons on top of it. I don't think... I mean, Alone in the Dark did that way before any of these games did, but, uh... Yeah, the the fact that they fit all the FMV on the cartridge is the impressive part. Um, yeah, it is. Um, would you say the game's pr like as far as gameplay and visuals? Is it not counting? Not talking about the full motion video. Is it basically the same as the PlayStation version? I mean, I I know I thought there were like some extra maybe like side modes or or Easter eggs or something, but like as far as well, like the core game's concerned, is it basically identical? Well, they're they're still both games still consist of five scenarios. Yeah, kind of like in a remake of Resident Evil Two, which is very phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And um, I think graphics wise, I think they're both very 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 similar. But I think the N sixty four ones just runs a tad smoother. You think so? Than the PlayStation yeah. one. I guess like I guess like the D pad kind of makes. This it one's better, gonna look but... really sharp, by the way, guys, because uh, like I had said in my description, we are running this on an ultra HDMI modded Nintendo sixty four. So uh, this one's gonna look really crisp compared to what you're probably used to. Well, I think uh, well, I think this game actually requires the expansion pack. I think I think that's why kind of why the game looks. Oh, uh, I don't know. Than... Well, yeah, it might it might require yeah. it. No, 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 no. I I just mean like the video output. That's yeah, yeah, because yeah. my modern yeah. console, my modern console. Yeah. So, uh, hey, Tetchy, we got Jules, Movie Metalhead, and Sin City, JD Crow. Welcome back, John Evan Bear, and. Um, uh, let's see. Hey, JD Venom Lace. What's going on, Venom? uh in jewels kazuya we got a whole lot of people here 47 people already this is crazy thanks guys I actually i got it. we bought um, resident Evil nintendo 64 at a yard sale because i got the game for christmas originally for for for, for place for for the first playstation yeah you got it on playstation first along with the first resident evil then i think we we're at some yard sale like, like we we're camping and then i think we could buy it at a yard sale for like five bucks or it's like a blockbuster being shut down something one of those two but like uh for like five bucks i bought this game because i heard it had full motion video and i was like i gotta see it you know then i, then I saw the full motion video in the game and i was like this is awesome you know when they go ah that's like their i'm with mcdonald's voice <laughs> I need a Big Mac. All right, let's play the game. So we're going to go ahead and switch back over, guys. Uh, I mean, I could... Uh... Yeah. Yeah, bye. <laughs> All right. Um, how about this? What, does, uh, what do you guys want to see? Do you want to see Leon or Claire? How about we take a poll? All right, we do a poll. How about we take a poll for Leon or Claire? Um, and then we'll take a poll for easy or hard. How about that? Oh, I already chose easy. Oh, you already chose easy? All right, well, we're I mean, like, easy, easy and normal, essentially the same. So that's why it's kind of... Brandon says that easy mode is basically the same thing. You just get less saves on normal. Apparently. Yeah. 
And so. like the zombies might instead of getting four instead of dying in four hits, you get dying in five like like three hits or whatever, and it's like it's it's not like Resident Evil One where it's like a significant difference per yeah. difficulty. Alright, yeah. so we got oh man, so so everyone's saying Claire. Okay, there is no either choice, JD. You either pick one or the other. That's how the, that's how uh, this works. So hard mode is after beat the game on. Yeah, we easy. don't have a hard mode option yeah, right yeah. now because uh, we're running this uh, off my cart, which doesn't have a save file. But now, if it was so. the remake, we play game on hardcore. But that's a little Claire, too hardcore. Claire. All right, so one, two, three, four, I see more five, Claire. six, seven, eight, nine. Well, I agree. Claire is pretty hot, and you know she was pretty hot in the in the, in the remake version, flat out. Like one, two, three. <laughs> She's a lot hotter than Jill is, I think. <laughs> okay, it's looking like Claire. It's looking like Claire, guys. Um, we do Claire. Okay. Yeah, we are definitely doing Claire then. And yeah, we're gonna play Leon Kennedy. All right, let's go for Claire. All right. The chat has declared Claire. Declared Claire. All right, let me actually turn the light off up here, too, because... <laughs> the, the shimmering light of madness. Yeah, that light will burn your eyes out. Ugh, All right, we're going to better. play a game on very high violence because the oh, yeah. game requires a lot of violence. And we're not going to... We're going to do red. What, what blood color do you guys want? All right, so we've got blue, green, and red. red. And that's it. Okay, so blue, green, and red. What blood color do you guys want? Red. We have made our declaration. <laughs> we have made our declaration. That's hey, great. guys, let's have some green red, blood. Red, 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 red. <laughs> of course, everyone's going to say red. Michael says green. Hey, Jeff Metal. He's Jeff Metal says red. Green. 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 Uh-oh, red. 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 It's either <laughs> blue. What's wrong with blue, man? Just blue, blue blood would be funny, actually. <laughs> but I think I think it's going to be red. If I say blue blood, it'd be red, like... Red, red, yeah, the reds, are, the reds are trickling in. All right, we'll do red. All right, it looks like it's going to be red. I don't right, think we're going to have a, a green landslide of votes for boss. blue. Well, we got 50 viewers, so it's red. How many playthroughs on YouTube, though, have blue blood? Well, how, well you know... We I, could be the very first blue well, blood playthrough. Well, you know, X Japan, their first <laughs> album was called Blue Blood. Really? Yeah, X Japan's Blue Blood. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to do another X Japan uh, playthrough on Saturn, but instead of doing that, we'll actually just play Resident Evil 2 with Blue Blood. Yeah, yeah. And label it as X Japan and Blue Blood. <laughs> and then it'll be all down votes because it would be super misleading. <laughs> and then people would sue us. All right, so <laughs> all right. I guess we'll go do, for it. Uh, Red Blood. Red Blood. There we is. go. Red Blood. Are you killing Smurfs? <laughs> Resident Evil 2. The T-Virus Blue? I think so. A bizarre incident occurred in the outskirts of an American suburb called Raccoon City. It was later revealed that the terrible disaster had been caused by the T-Virus. The T-Bone? A toxin created by the <laughs> International Enterprise of The T-Bone Saxman Virus. Bioweapon experiments. It turned the everyone City blue. Department, special stars immediately began investigation in the affair. The case was apparently closed, thanks to the efforts of STARS members Chris Redfield and Jill Valentine. But the Umbrella Corporation's experiments were far from finished. Was that it? Yeah. Okay, I was gonna... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we'll let all the uh, the cutscenes roll out and stuff I mean, like this that. Looks, so this looks pretty good, man. Yeah, it's pretty soft compared to the PlayStation version, but it's still admirable that they were able to get the full motion video on the cartridge. Got twenty nine diner right there. Twenty nine diner. <laughs> Are they still open? I think so. I think they're still around. <sighs> Fairfax, Virginia. And what's cool about the remake version is that this is where you would explore in a gas station here in the remake. Oh, so they made this playable, basically. Yeah. That's cool. Guys, the expansion pack is not mandatory. Okay. Oh, the inventory is 640 by 480. Well, that explains why uh, 
Hello? That explains things. Is anyone here? When I was setting up uh, the crop, uh, the menu stretched up vertically um, farther than in game. I think the zombie in the first Resident Evil is a little bit more menacing when in the mansion than than this. Are you listening? This is when you have Michael Jackson's Thriller kick in right here. Yeah, then my video would get blocked in several countries because of copyright claims. Oh, really? <laughs> and then all my royalties would go to Michael Jackson even though he's dead. <laughs> That's not fair. No. Can't stay out here. Head to the police station. It'll be a lot safer. By the way, Claire, this is hard mode. Have fun. I have no idea, Game Eagle. <laughs> it goes to whoever makes the copyright claim. Mine's Claire. Claire Redfield. <clears throat> yes, sir. We're playing the Nintendo 64 version. Hey, could you open the glove box? Sure. There's a gun inside. You better take it with you. <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> you okay? It's better him than them. You see the zombie slow motion fall through the glass. Hey, Adam. You know, that's a pretty hell of an intense start, is the, you know, zombie flying the window, the guy, the bit. Hey, Constantine. So I gotta see if this uh, works, my trick here works. So T-Bone says, uh, are you gonna go for the costume closet? Um... Uh, you gotta be on a normal mode for costume closet, or let's it be the game. Oh yeah, that's right. You're on easy mode. Because but but basically, you gotta go through this whole area without getting hit once, and then you see Brad uh, beneath the uh, the stairwell. You kill Brad because he's from Resident Evil One, Stars Bravo Team. Hey Tony. You kill him. Mm -hmm. You get the uh, the you get the costume key. Who are you? So. What are you doing here? And there's one for Leon, too. Don't shoot! I'm a human! Your acting says otherwise. Really? Voiced by Alison Court, previously voiced for Jubilee in the 90s X-Men cartoon. Oh, never Oh, really. nice. Nice. That X-Men cartoon was awesome. Oh, hell yeah, it was. <laughs> it was great. In this town? Oh, never mind. Brad was Alpha Team, not Stars. I ain't got no clue, darling. By the time I noticed something was wrong, the entire city was infested with zombies. But Brad, but Brad died in the first one, right? No, see, Brad was the one who picked you up in the first one, right? I don't know. Brad, I think, rescued everyone in the first version. Uh, Katana? No, I... I uh, not a big survival horror guy, which is why Brandon's here doing this. I think Brandon's played most of them, though. Did you play the Dreamcast one? I know I owned it for a little while. Did you try it? For Code Veronica? No. Um, Resident Evil 2. They ported it to, Dream to Dreamcast. I actually never knew they made Did that. you do the Dreamcast? Or did you do the GameCube version? No. no? Alright, well, never mind. Yeah, we don't have an answer for you. <laughs> Katana, sorry. <laughs> we did have the Windows 95 version, though. Oh, 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 Katana. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was the uh, Dreamcast version. No, no, no. You're... No, Katana is a in the chat. 
Katana Gaming. I'm not paying attention. He, to he's that, saying, right? have you tried most of the ports of this? I love the Dreamcast one myself. That's why I asked you. Oh, no, no. I haven't played the Dreamcast one before. Alright. So, no. <laughs> I owned the Dreamcast one. I just never played it. So, the costume closet, she does get a new gun, apparently. According oh, really? to T-Bone. Oh, yeah. Cool. You have the 90s Amazon X... Or the X-Men on your Amazon. It wasn't expensive to buy. Okay. GameCube 1 was almost identical to the Dreamcast version, Ronnie says. So, I know Leon's gun was a little quicker than, or a little more powerful than the uh, than Claire's gun for some reason. Yeah, Simon, I think you're right about that. Actually, let me uh, oh, let me let me check for that. I'm actually kind of curious. Yeah, retro Resident Evil. I remember that video. Jeez, that was almost two years ago? Why what video is that? Uh, Digital Foundry, they do uh, video game technical analysis, but they also do it for retro games occasionally. Nice. Yeah, thanks, T-Bone. Yeah, it's... Uh, an Ultra HDMI mod for N64. I had the mod done last year. It was pretty expensive, um, but the, the video quality is really good. Uh, we've got it at 1080p right now, and you will see, like, it, it's it's doing, like, uh, deinterlacing, and so you're going to see, like, horizontal lines, uh, you know, when there's a lot of fast movement, but... Um, there are some other video modes I could do that might fix that, but it'll make the image look really soft. Um, and down here is where uh, Brad would be. But yeah, it is, it's very, very crisp video output. It's super nice and pretty much no input lag. Yeah, previously I was doing S-Video um, on my N64, but yeah. Shiny Philistines uh, says, Dreamcast version was good. It was also nice that the PAL version actually provided a 60 hertz mode. Oh, that's nice. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, not a lot of PAL games did that. Oh, I had to check out the Dreamcast version. It sounds pretty interesting, though. I... It wasn't until... Take a look at uh, MBG's video. What Modern Vintage Gamer video did he do? Yeah, no, he knows... He really knows this stuff, especially when it comes to, like... Uh, um, emulation and programming and all that stuff because he actually has worked on that stuff like oh, wow. directly yeah if there's anyone that I trust like um, in terms of like providing good emulation info it's that guy yeah feel free to explain what you're doing Brandon if like you know talk about like where you're trying to go or what you're doing or where this is going to lead to all that stuff all right so right now we had to unlock the side oh. doors and we meet <laughs> our good friend marvin hey marvin Starting yeah because like i've never Maybe actually seen this game all the way through so like this is going to be all new to me too for the most part mm -hmm. so if you want to talk me Claire, through it as you go that'll be good for me I'm looking for my brother chris so this is the first game where Claire ventures off to find her brother Chris. This is like the the start of it mm -hmm. all right here. Yeah. Yeah. And this is when Leon first got hired by uh, Raccoon Police Department. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. What happened? About two months ago, there was this incident involving these zombie-like creatures. In a mansion located in the outskirts of this city, Chris and the other stars members discovered that Umbrella was behind 
everything. You can skip the cutscenes in the, At the Dreamcast risk of their version. Own lives. Huh. But no one believed. Yeah, in this one, you can't skip through any cutscenes. So. Are you okay? This game seemed a lot more grounded than later Just Resident Evil games. I remember playing... I actually did play Resident Evil Revelations on the Wii U because not much was available on the Wii U. So I played it. Um, and Claire was escaping... Wait, that was Claire in that one, right? Uh, she was in part two. Or was that... That must have been Jill? There's a Jill in the first one. And then Claire okay, never mind. I thought it was Claire, but Jill, Claire, whatever. Well, Barry Burton was in the second one too. Um, yeah, Barry. Burton, just escaping right. from like ridiculous, like life or death situations over and over and over again. And I was just like, all right, this is so unbelievable. <laughs> These old Resident Evil games feel like they're pretty grounded and like it's stuff that could, in a way, like actually happen. That's why. Know? That's why I started to fall in love with Code Veronica again when yeah. I played it. I was like, this is so this is so great. And uh Resident Evil 3. But yeah, I beat Revelations 1 and 2, and uh I like I probably would say the first one's better than the second one as far as the Revelation series go. Yeah, I didn't really have any interest in part two. I mean part one, like it was like a kind of a fun, dumb ride at the time in particular. This was before I was streaming. Um, and so I'd come home from work, I'd get a new Wii U game and actually, you know, play it, you know, in the, to the wee hours of night. And so I don't know, over the course of a week, I ran through Revelations and beat it. But, um, after watching you play, like, after you watching you play Resident Evil 1 last year, like, I, I really appreciated, like, the more grounded approach to, like, survival horror, you know? Yeah, but the remake, Resident Evil 2 remake, is awesome. Oh, are those the the liquors? Is that what they call yeah, them? Yeah, you know what's crazy is that they're. Little... I have seen this game before, and Brandon used to like play it a little bit, like while I'd be working on my computer when we, you know, back in the day living at mom and dad's house. It's like some brutal growing up right there, man. So I've I've seen many parts of the game, but I've never seen a playthrough like straight through all the, all the way to the end. I do know some of the enemy names. I do know some of the locations, but. Like, I do remember this. Yeah. That's awesome. What I like about Resident Evil 2, I think they really um, captured the suspense yeah. very well. I mean, I can, just like the atmosphere is great with that backing mm -hmm. audio, the music, or the, the ambience and sounds. And the whole game kind of keeps a steady tension, too. Yeah. It's not like uh, the later ones where the tension kind of goes off and on a little bit. So where are we heading to now? We are headed to getting the precinct keys. Okay. What's the ammo situation like in this game compared to say part one? Are, are you still pretty tight on ammo overall uh, or, or is it okay to actually shoot zombies and not feel like you're gonna run out? I usually switch between a knife and the knife and a uh, gun more uh -huh. on this one. Did you knife the guys on the ground in the first Resident Evil? Yeah. Or is that... Can. Okay. That's something I never did back in the day. They're really conserved, really good ammunition. 
probably like four hits with a the handgun. Then when they get down to the ground the first time, that's when you knife them. Mm -hmm. And then that's how you really stack up your ammunition. Yeah. That's how you can get multiple um, uh, piles of uh, regular handgun. Because in, in the first code, because in Resident Evil Code Veronica, it helps. <laughs> Especially when you will do. And the green herbs give you health, obviously. Mm -hmm. do, do they still have like multiple herb tiers, yep. like multiple like yellow herbs and stuff like that? Uh, oh, it no. it, it's only just uh, blue, red, and green. Blue, red, and green. Okay. Yeah, they didn't introduce the yellow until uh, part four. <laughs> I'm confusing. Part four is the only one I ever. Well, <laughs> until Revelations, part four was the only one I ever beat. Part four is. I played the hell out of part four. It's the best like, one in the series, I think. I want to go back and do a playthrough of that again soon. I love part four. It's an amazing game. Shiny Philistine says, for Resident Evil 2, the writer they brought in was mostly known for writing Sentai shows. Uh, it was thanks to him that Claire exists as a way to connect it to the first Resident Evil. Well, that's oh, well, clever. That's cool. Crazy like a fox. Movie Metalhead says, ammo is more readily available in 2, whereas in 1... It was actually a little more scarce, uh, and you can run out of it if you don't know which enemies to kill and which to avoid. Oh yeah, definitely. That's happened to me before yeah, in the first one. I do agree on that one, because you kind of have uh, to know where the ammo is to uh, kind of search a little bit. Versus this one, at almost save point, there's at least a pack of handgun rounds. Or So this is our very first puzzle. We got... Yeah, I was going to ask, is this one still very puzzle-oriented, like the first game? It is. Yeah, that's They're, what I figured. The puzzles are a little, I think, not quite as... Like, they're a little more... Uh, a little more obtuse. Yeah, yeah, it's just a little... A little bit weirder. A little it's like, easier. why is there a puzzle in the police station? We are still in the police station, right? Or we go somewhere else. I was, I was looking at chat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is still the police station. <laughs> It's an advanced police station. Like, who have. designed this police station? <laughs> I'm sure someone has asked that question before. I'm probably not the first one. I'm not clever. I know. It's a chief, <laughs> chief irons. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you changed your name to Quake Nerd. Seriously, you were so obsessed with that game. <laughs> I was playing a uh, Quake not too long ago. Yeah, me too. I, I love, play Quake all the time. I love the first Quake game. Mm -hmm. I finally beat Quake 2. <laughs> I, finally, I finally beat Quake 2. And then at the end, you felt underwhelmed. Like, you probably could have spent your time doing better things. Yeah, yeah. That's how I always feel when I beat Quake 2. Yet, I still go back to it every couple years. The music's the only reason why I play. That's, I think, why I go back to it every couple years. The, the soundtrack. It's a great soundtrack. So some of these items we can and can't get because... But we can get the G-Launcher. Yeah, the grenade launcher is good. There's some uh, uses for that. Uh, nothing missing here. Unless if you're like a file, like a file collector. And over here you get the whole team of uh, stars. You got Chris, Jill, the whole nine yards. Resker, that's pretty cool. And some of those guys were dead in the first Resident Evil. It's pretty neat. Um, and it's not on the Nintendo 64. We're playing it on a uh, TI-84 graphing calculator. Now here's one part that used to freak me out when I was a kid. This part right here. Hey, Firehawk, welcome back. <laughs> Just hearing the fax machine. Nice, the fax machine. Because it's, it's, it's things like that you don't expect. You know, this is kind of surprised you. Well, yeah. Like, back in the 90s, at least, it was like, whoa. Well, no, I mean, if you even today, if you never played the game before, you're not expecting it to just... You know, it's like if you're running around in a room or it's some random game and the telephone rings out of nowhere, and you're like, mm -hmm. that's actually scared me before in some games. Oh, yeah. Just because you don't expect it. So the writer uh, also had a good relationship with Hideki Kamiya. Uh, 
the director yeah he even said uh him a box filled with porn mags after he was hospitalized due to a motor at motorcycle accident <laughs> oh jeez <laughs> man there's some uh interesting resident evil 2 lore going on here uh so <laughs> overall brandon whose weapons do you prefer leon's or claire's uh leon yeah leon's handguns what, a lot what's, better. what's the difference between the weapons Shotgun. Well, let's see. Uh, uh, with Leon, you get a shotgun. Uh, you get a. Um... Yeah, you get, yeah, you get a shotgun. You get a better handgun. You get a. Uh... Now with both characters, you do get some machine guns for both characters. You get the lightning gun or like some weird electrical zap charge gun for both characters. Yeah. Uh, the magnums are very powerful. Magnum's a very powerful weapon, too. That's about the only difference. Hey, that is. tickles! <laughs> With Claire, you're gonna find more, more grenade launch, like more grenade rounds. Get your hands off me! All four of them! <laughs> Getting manhandled by zombies. Not gonna get film D? Oh. I don't know, man. Remember, guys, we're just playing through this kind of casually. Like, we don't play... Brandon has is, hasn't played this religiously in a long time, so... We're probably going to be missing a lot of stuff, so... Just... I mean, you can ask, but the answer's probably going to be no. I probably... <laughs> I, I probably are. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm lucky enough that Brandon did a recent playthrough of it just for this stream. Because this is my channel. This isn't his channel. He doesn't need to help me out well, like this. Basically... You how, know, so... Well, there, how, there's a lot of stuff we're not going to get. Well, here's how Film D works. If okay. you go to the, uh, the stack of papers... And... No, uh, the, the start, the uh, Alpha Team and Stars Bravo picture, you gotta search it 50 times. You search, oh, it, 50, you, you search it 50 times, and then you can get the, um... <laughs> that's how you, uh... Actually, we can go over here. That's have you ever gotten, gonna... have you ever achieved the rating where you got the chain gun as a reward? I have, actually, yes. Yes? Yes, I have. And the chain gun is pretty awesome. Now, what's also cool about this game is uh, the scenarios. The scenarios are cool in this one. You got scenario one and scenario two. Mm hmm. So, in a way, it's almost like New Game Plus or like an arranged mode or something? Yeah. Okay, yeah. nice. Hey, Micah, welcome back. Now, we're going to go back through here for one second. I'm gonna drop this in here real quick and we're gonna get maybe I got all those first aid sprays. Yeah. Get a little collection here going. It might have been a different film D and a Wesker's desk. So I guess it's like a film E or something, I don't know. <laughs> Ever did a Tofu run? I did the Tofu run in the remake Resident Evil uh, 2. Because uh, playing as Honk is, is, is one of my favorite characters. But Tofu is pretty rad. Like, you know, like this little block of like tofu with like knives and just go around and he's like yippee 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 kill these people it's, <laughs> there's three tofu uh, characters and in, in the remake of Resident Evil um uh in the remake of Resident Evil 2 and like in uh, like battle R2 remake yeah yeah it's so cool man yeah we had actually talked about potentially doing that one this year but he was like yeah I, th I think the N64 version or PlayStation version if I could get a copy of it which I don't want to buy a copy. They're like 25 bucks. And I'm like, eh, I've already got the 64 one here, so. 
Um, but yeah, maybe next year we'll uh, we'll either do another game in the series, or maybe we'll do the remake. Although Brandon says the remake takes longer to go through. I could probably go through the remake about the same amount of time as this one. Really? Okay. Yeah. The remake, you so get... That's not too bad, then. You can actually get through the game... You can actually get through the remake one a lot quicker than this one. Because, like, the way that gets... The way they... Well, speed running aside, because I know you could definitely beat this game in, like, two hours, apparently. Or oh, less. Yeah. I'm sure the speed run's even quicker. If you don't save at all, you probably get through the game alert. I'm actually kind of curious. Let me check out a Resident Evil 2 speed run. Uh, Resident Evil 2 speed speed run. Um, actually, you know what What I should do is uh, just go to speedrun.com and just... <laughs> and then I can just look at the leaderboards. Um, let's see. Two. 48 minutes is the world record. Oh, wow. Well, no. 48 minutes and 43 seconds. So, yeah, that's crazy. That's a pretty crazy speed yeah, run. So the speed run is wild. This then I'm talking not the remake, but the original PlayStation version. I think the remake one I saw someone beat again. Oh, that's the Leon campaign. The Claire campaign is 52 minutes and four seconds. That's the world record, and that's on PC. PC. It looks like everyone runs the PC version because of the fastest load times. I'm assuming. Interesting. Yeah, there's more. Uh... I had to look at the speed running because some dude out there is going to post the comment and be like. You can get through it a lot faster, as speedrunners have shown. I think a true speedrunner needs to use a controller. <laughs> Unless you're playing a game like Quake, where it's like... The first one no, I mean, if you're playing the PC version, it's different. Yeah, they give yeah. you keyboard and mouse controls. Although, they're probably playing with a keyboard only. Because I don't, I don't think you can even aim with the mouse and... Resident Evil 2 PC. Well, maybe you... I don't know. I, I haven't played the Windows 95 version in, like, 20 years. I think it would be a little bit harder to play with the uh, keyboard, like, like More Resident than 20 years. I mean, beating Metroid Fusion, the Game Boy Advance later with the keyboard, was a was, was already more challenging than actually opposed to using, like, a... a, a like, a controller, you know? Yeah! be the downer firehawk but like i don't find this right here impressive at all like this is just very like very typical stuff from back then uh like what impresses me is having the full motion video because that's that's what you know that <laughs> wasn't the playstation version two discs well, or is it one disc one for claire one for yeah that's what i thought yeah. And the reason it was that was because of all the full motion video. That's what took up the majority of the disc space. Um, I mean, the Nintendo 64 is a is a was a beefy system for the time. It was quite capable. So it's like, um, you know, having these interactive two dimensional backgrounds with 3D polygonal objects on top of it wasn't that. I mean, that was just. The Nintendo 64 could do that just fine. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was that. The full motion video, getting that crime on the cartridge, that was that was something. And I think this is actually one of the largest N64 ROMs, if not the largest. Really? Um, something like that. Let me look that up real quick. That's one nice thing about me not actually playing, is that I can actually look stuff up while you play. Yeah, that's that's always good. But yeah, I mean, like I, I was like, three DO did polygonal objects on top of two D backdrops, <laughs> and that was like nineteen ninety four, I think, when that game came out. So, um, so surely the Nintendo sixty four could do the same thing. Directed, these polygons are higher quality texture map and whatnot but yeah the n64 was no slouch it's just it was limited by its cartridge sizes and uh yeah so the devs had to find uh to come up with a really good compression algorithm for that <laughs> speedrun this isn't a sonic game <laughs> 
I was playing Sonic Generations uh, not too long ago. Don't call me Shirley. <laughs> uh, yep, good old Alone in the Dark. I have not played Alone in the Dark in a while. Yeah, I'm going to try to fire that up maybe later this week. Because uh, I wanted to try to maybe try to get a Let's Play knocked out of it this month. I don't know if I'm going to be able to, but I've been wanting to do that for years. Oh, damn, we're gonna clean some inventory space. Uh, damn, let's do this. How much health do you have? Surprisingly. Oh, I'm... you're fine. Yes, yeah, it says you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> right, Nintendo 64 Resident Evil 2, so. Uh... Resident Evil 1.5. Yeah, the audio apparently was also compressed. Using novel techniques that shift the burden more towards the console's high real-time processing power. That's quoted from Wikipedia. <laughs> Don't quote <laughs> me. Yeah, Firehawk. I mean, if if they got rid of like all the full motion video and minimized well, I don't know. Let's just say it got rid of all, all the full motion video. Um, well, I don't even know what I'm saying here. The cartridge size limitation was, was the biggest issue. But yeah, 2D backdrops with polygons on top. Nah, the N64 could do that just fine. Well, you got your good old classic prank with a little step stool you gotta find in this one. <laughs> kind of like in the first version of with the with a step stool that you gotta move. Yeah, so the port was apparently done by Angel Studios, and let's check them out. Who is now Rockstar San Diego. Interesting. And... Really, he founded Angel Studios in 1984. Yeah, so Angel Studios have been around for a long time. So Angel Studios was around way before video games. That's crazy. They did special effects and stuff like that. Um, they got into video games in 1993. Late 90s, they did the port for Resident Evil 2 on N64. They cooperated with technology company Silicon Graphics. They did. Oh, they did the cutscenes for Sega CD's uh, Echo, Tides of Time. Oh, Interesting. That's, that's, dude, that's crazy. that's classic, man. Hell yeah. And they did cutscenes on Mr. Bones for the Sega Saturn. Nice. Mr. Bones. That was a crazy game. Oh, they developed the... Uh, the Ken Griffey Jr. baseball games for N64. I played uh, the first two Dino Crisis games for the uh, PlayStation. I've beaten the second one, but I have not beaten the first one. Um, yeah, those are pretty cool games. Dino Crisis was, was a pretty fun... Uh, Pretty fun series. See, it was during that time when Parasite Eve came out, and I was more hooked on the Parasite Eve than I was uh, Dino Crisis. Only because uh, I'm more of an RPG guy. I would, I would, back, back in the day, I would take RPGs over a game like Resident Evil, but having a horror plus Resident Evil style game, I was like, this is pretty cool. RPG elements. Help me. But yeah, Parasite Eve, freaking amazing, man. <laughs> the Ken Griffey game was their pinnacle. <laughs> What's going on, Vince? <laughs> For 
the third. Yeah, Game Eagle. I would assume the uh, Square moving Final Fantasy away from N64 was, I'm going to guess, obviously limited storage space, but also the higher cost of uh, carts. Nintendo had very high uh, manufacturing fees. Um, Have you seen a little girl around here? There was less profit to be made, basically. Yeah, you just missed her. Who is she? So I think the combination of the two is what got them away from Nintendo. Stay here alone. Leon, I'll go look for her. Parasite Ape 2 is not a bad game. PlayStation was also doing quite well just right from the get-go, you know. So it made sense. Keep in touch if something comes up. Nintendo's uh, move to or not move to cartridge, but their move to stay on cartridge was kind of controversial even at the time. Sega had already moved to CDs. You know, 3DO was a thing. PlayStation was obviously CDs. And you had all their more obscure CD platforms like the Neo Geo CD and the freaking Jaguar CD. <laughs> and then the earlier CD add-ons for consoles. It's like, obviously that's the direction the industry was moving, but... Yeah, that one cost Nintendo quite a bit back then. N64 was still a success, but it was kind of like... Nintendo had to play catch-up for a while after that. The GameCube actually didn't do that well comparatively, even to, to Nintendo 64. They didn't rebound from that until the Wii. <laughs> I still like the N64, despite not having all the bells and whistles of its contemporary CD competitors. Saturn, PlayStation. Yeah, Micah, yeah, I mean, some N64 games, weren't there like 80, 90, 100 dollar games back then? Yeah. Like, wasn't Turok like 80 or 90 bucks when it came out? GoldenEye was like 70 bucks when it came out, I think. Yeah, GoldenEye was a very expensive game back, back when it came out. Yeah, Movie Metal, I mean, the GameCube was a very, you know, it, hardware-wise, it was a great console. See, that's why... But it I... didn't get the software that, you know, uh, its competitors got. It had great software, but... It didn't have the massive lineup of, you know, the Xbox and PS2. PS2 in particular, just... That's a library that's really tough to beat. Especially once you get in the, the import side. You combine those two, the import games and the North American titles. It's like... What a library. Oh, yeah. Not so friendly gaming. Welcome. <laughs> Things are going, as they always are, until they no longer are, and uh, that would suck. That time will suck. Yeah. Hey, Evan. Is this the version with random loot? Uh, I don't know. Maybe there's an option for that, but no. Mm, we're, we're, we're just playing a, a, a brand new game, fresh, no save files already. Well, this is not a hack. This is just a, a uh, regular Resident Evil 2 straight classic I, I never heard of random loot before that that must have been like improbable. yeah movie, i mean movie metalhead like uh i'm, I'm kind of talking near the beginning and 64 games were super expensive in the very beginning golden eye was a couple years later no golden eye was like i think golden eye was about a year after the n64's launch it was 97 right mm -hmm. i August 97. We watched Wrestling with Gaming's GoldenEye video today, actually. Brandon, a, Brandon hadn't seen it yet. So. That was a great video. Perfect Dark was 70. Repeating history with PS5 and Xbox One X game prices. Uh, or Xbox Series X, sorry. Uh, yeah, that's a tough one because, you know, game prices haven't really gone up much in the last 20 years. Uh, you know, 50 to $60. And even some games still come out at 50 and some even come out at less than that, you know? Uh, but games cost a lot more to develop now. That's the kind of 
ironic thing about it is development costs have skyrocketed, but um, the prices that publishers are selling their games for haven't gone up to compensate for that. So I think a price hike is warranted for, I mean, at least the really big budget titles that have a lot to to recoup. I mean, you look at the, uh, the credits of like Doom Eternal, it goes oh, on yeah. forever, man. It's like that's why the they had done. to pay all those people. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's crazy. So they get more sales. I mean, some might, but I don't. I don't know about across the board. Strength of the dollar is not as strong as it was in the nineties. Yeah, yeah, Roni. <laughs> yeah, Retro Simon, I mean, more people do play games now, but I think there are also a lot more people developing now as well. There's more people trying to get a piece of that pie, so... You know, obviously it's not super cut and dry. There's a lot of nuance to the, the issue and the topic. I mean, once you start factoring in all the uh, independent developers, the indie guys... That... Have their games featured in the exact same store pages as the AAA guys? You know, they're all fighting for that space. I can definitely tell you, shmup guys, shmup developers are not doing better now than they were 20, 25 years ago. Really? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, wow. So, I mean, some genres in particular as well just don't sell these days, period. So even though there are more people playing, you still have some genres where they're still not doing even as well as they were 20 years ago. Uh, Brandon is not, Michael. Um, I don't even know if Brandon knows what Cyberpunk is. Have you heard of Cyberpunk 2077? I, uh, You've probably maybe seen some. I've very seen basic advertisements yeah. for for cyberpunk, cy cyberpunk. I heard I heard great great things about 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 those games and um, haven't haven't played any of them though. Well, I mean, Cyberpunk is uh, developed by the guys that did the Witcher series. Oh, uh, okay. Um, and Cyberpunk is a brand new game. Um, it's not out yet. So the answer is no, Michael. <laughs> Evan says. Uh, if he plays the remake of this, will he get the basic gist of the story, or is it warped in some kind of way? I think that it follows pretty faithfully, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Like, this is a continuation right after the second, or, like, right after the first one. It's not like Resident Evil Code Veronica, where you play Code Veronica, it's like, oh, hell, you know, I don't know what the story is. <laughs> because there's a, a recap uh, story in this game that kind of explains what happens... A little bit in the past before the events of Resident Evil 2. Where's the green blood? Uh, we have it set to red blood. You can set red, blue, or green. And the <laughs> chat chose red. Oh, look, another crystal. I wish rare, valuable, expensive crystals would just crap their way out of my paintings. <laughs> and I'd go sell them and go buy something else. See, with Leon, there's a uh, hidden patch of a... Th there's a ammunition over here in the corner. So with Leon, there's different uh, ammo spots for... Uh, versus, versus Claire. Which is pretty, pretty neat. Uh, lawnmower, yes. But uh, even if a game still sells millions of copies, the company still might not recoup their costs. That's how expensive it is to make a big budget title these days. I remember years ago, it was one of the earlier, you know, when they were kind of like rebooting the Tomb Raider series. I don't know if it was the first one or the second one, but like it sold something like, I don't remember the exact numbers. I'm just gonna just toss out some random number. Uh, it's something like 5 million copies. And Square Enix, Square Enix? Were they the publishers of that? Um, yeah. For Tomb Raider, yeah, I think. Yeah, um, they're like, it's still a failure. 
<laughs> or like it didn't meet expectations. Like, what? Um, like that's how expensive it is to to make these modern big budget titles. It's ridiculous. So, like I said, it's a nuanced issue. It's not so black and white. And it's gonna vary from publisher to publisher, game to game. They're probably going to be games that cost much less to make and they turn out to be really big successes and they make lots of money, you know, hand over fist. But then there are going to be other titles that, you know, will cost more to make, still sell a lot, but not recoup as much. And so they're not seen as these massive successes. And uh, not so friendly gaming to schmups lost the substance it had back in the day. Yeah, I don't know if I agree with that. I think shmups have changed on average, um, but in terms of scoring and rules, I think they've actually gained substance. Uh, shmups are much more nuanced and intricate now than they ever have been. Uh, you look at uh, Games by Cave in particular, um, their scoring systems have a lot of subtlety to them. It's not about just holding down the fire button and dodging anymore. If you want to get the most out of the game. Um. But you are right that there aren't a lot of shooters like Thunder Force. The classic Thunder Forces or Musha or a good old classic Gradius game. You know, the, uh... Not a lot of shooters where stage hazards are a thing. Where you can run into walls and you got to watch out for your environment. Although, R-Type, as of doing this stream, um, R-Type Final 2 is in development, so that should hopefully bring that back at least a little bit. Or that game. I'm looking forward to that. I backed it on Kickstarter. But we'll see. Could Veronica X use You Get Wesker's Diary? You do get, re you do get Wesker's Diary in that one. And there's a trick with the crows here. Let's see if I can not get hurt by the crows. Because these crows will mess you up. <laughs> and that's why they put herbs outside here. Because they know the players can get hurt by these crows. <laughs> Super Stardust HD. Uh, I think I actually own that. Let me double check. Um... I think I had that on PS4. Yeah, it was it was pretty cool. I didn't put a lot of time into it, but I did like it. Um, I had to sell my PS4 earlier this year when I was trying to sell, you know pay out some debt, so I don't have access to it right now. But I do want to put more time into that when I I'll probably get a PS5 down the road. Sony has confirmed that it'll play pretty much all PS4 games except for a handful that are, aren't, aren't going to work right. I'll probably just buy a PS5 and re-download all my PS4 games to it. Uh, I like those games a lot, Katana. I have, I have live streams of those on my channel here. I love Castlevania. Great. Game. I also have a Legacy Great of Darkness game. one, but you can find that from the other video. So. And if people were wondering why I didn't take the bow gun in the beginning, in the beginning of the game, it's because you get it again here. But now, if you're playing a game with Leon, you can actually keep the bow gun there. So then, when you're playing a game with Leon, you can pick that bow gun up. So that's why they have duplicate guns, weapons in this game because you could leave them for a character per scenario, which is very unique in this game. For, uh, you know, ammo. Oh, by the way, the Wikipedia article says that this version offers features that were not included on any other system, such as alternate costumes, the ability to change the, the degree of violence and to change the blood color, and a randomizer to place items differently during each playthrough. I 
And there's also apparently a first-person con uh, control scheme. We're going to have to try the randomizer. I, n I never knew that there was a randomizer in this one. That would be pretty cool to play with a randomizer. Yeah, Retro Simon, it's just 10, and I looked at the list, and they're not really any games that I would want to play. Uh, Shadow Complex, I already own on 360, and I think I own the, the remaster as well on Xbox One, so... Meh. Yeah, and it's like, I think, one or two VR titles as well, so... Legacy of Darkness, yeah. I mean, it, you could say Complete Edition, but they did rearrange pretty much all the existing levels, Ego, so they're both worth playing. VJ, yes, we're playing the N64 version. Yep, yep. One of my favorite games of all time back when I was growing up. But yeah, the Castlevania 64 games I like a lot. I was actually playing the first one last week. I got this... Uh, here, pause the game for a second, Brandon. Right so, uh, I actually picked this up last week. Ooh, we're back! The, uh, Retrobit Tribute 64 controller. And so I did a stream on Twitch where I was basically testing it out for a handful of hours. Uh, controller's not great. The TLDR is on it. Um, but I did play Castlevania last week with it. It actually works really well with Castlevania. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, VR is awesome, Micah, but the VR games that don't work on PS5 didn't... I mean, granted, I didn't look into them to see what the gameplay was like, but eh, just based on the names alone, I'm guessing they're probably not anything special. But I don't know. We'll see. But yeah, the Castlevania games on 64, I think, are solid games. There is effort required to get into them, just like most 3D games from that era. I mean, you go back to almost any 3D title, even Resident Evil, man. I hopped in to do some tests, and I was like, oh, God, these tank controls. <laughs> it's not easy to pick up and play, you know? Like, even something like this takes a little bit of uh, adjustment. It's actually what color in 64 controller is my favorite. That's like asking what my favorite color is. It's a lot um, worse than Resident Evil 3 remake. I, think. I don't really care, Michael, as long as the controller works. The Resident Evil 3 remakes worse, I think, than the gameplay in Resident Evil 2. Oh, yeah, I remember you telling me about that. The Resident Evil 3 remake. Yeah, you yeah. weren't really impressed with it. No, nah, hell no, I wasn't. It was, it was I mean, a lot of people liked it, but nah. you didn't like it that much for some reason. I, I think they could add, they could add it a lot more to it. Like, they really could have added more to it. Yeah. But that second one's a masterpiece, man. What? So now we have to get the, uh... Well, see, the original Resident Evil 3 for, for PlayStation was awesome. Uh, Simon, so how the compa how the compatibility is going to work is if a game has an unlocked frame rate um, and uh, dynamic resolution scaling, it will get an inherent boost out of the box. Uh, anything else is going to need a, a patch. And Sony's probably not going to be patching many titles unless they're like huge hits, you know. So if you have a game that has variable frame rate, you know, one minute it's 60 frames a second, then the next it's 45. Like, yes, that will get performance boosts. It'll most likely be a constant 60. Just like on the Xbox side. Basically going to be the same. Now when they're well, I don't want to spoil nothing. Yeah, don't spoil anything. But Shiny Philistine says uh, he liked the Resident Evil 3 remake, but it was disappointing they removed a lot of the features that made the original version stand out. I agree, 100%. Like the clock tower. Where'd the clock tower go in the remake? Tony Hawk's 1 and 2. Uh, excellent remake. Brandon, I, I haven't played as much as I want because of just my YouTube stuff. It's just been busy with that. Um, but Brandon it. played the hell out of it. I beat it already. He didn't even know it was coming out. And I told him that he bought it right away. And, and then I played it for like maybe eight hours straight. <laughs> <laughs> Made my own skate parks, everything. 
I, l I love the uh, the skate park feature in it. What I'm disappointed about it though is I want to play it again with another skater starting fresh fresh goals everything like you play as a skater and just collect stats you don't really start a fresh game completely kind of like you could in the classic uh, yeah. 20 out games all right so we got the diamond uh precinct key so we gotta go down over here Twenty twenty is the year of great remakes. Uh, Tony Hawk One and Two, Xenoblade Chronicles on Switch, which I got today. What else was remade this year? Hmm. Oh, Resident Evil. 3. Well, Resident Evil Three, yeah. <laughs> Resident Evil Two was last year, or is it the year before now? I don't remember. Time flies. It was last year, I think, like... Early. Oh, yeah, Final Fantasy VII Remake. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Crisis Remaster, yeah. Yeah, Streets of Rage 4 is not a remake. That's a full-on... Full-on follow-up. Excellent game, though. Oh, yeah, Seiken Densetsu 3. SpongeBob uh, SquarePants, yeah. Really? They made a remake of Seiken Densetsu 3? Yeah, it's on the Switch. Uh, did Seiken oh, Densetsu cool. 3... It was, it was called Trials of Mana, I think. Ah, uh, I had actually thought about picking that up. I it's was on, it's at on the a, store, and, and they had a, they have a Steam copy also. Of it. I saw I saw it on. Uh, oh, is it on Steam? My uh, I saw, it, I saw my uh, wish list. Medieval got a remake. Okay, I beat the original one for the SNES uh, emulator. Great game, by the way. This is my favorite part in the game right here coming up. And I loved the remake version and the remake this part in the in the remake version right here. Mm-hmm. Perfect. And you'll see why this is my favorite part in the game. Only because, like, you see the mirror here, you're like, ah, oh, what's gonna go on? That scared the heck out of me when I, like, when I first played the game years ago, I was like, oh man! <laughs> But yeah, it... that was PSP Ego, and actually, I thought that was a brand new game. Um, Medieval on on PSP was like a brand new game. I know which one you're talking about. Yeah. Hmm. PSP was a long time ago, though. <laughs> you go back and you look at PSP games, you're like, mm, I don't know if this is closer to PS One or PS Two. There's, it's like it kind of. <laughs> no, it was more. A lot of PSP games look more like PS Two, but they weren't quite there. I loved PSP, man. It was such a good system. And it was very impressive, but a lot of its games haven't aged well visually. Especially when you blow them up through an upscaler. Oh, uh, the propane tank and alligator? Oh yeah, Command and Conquer. Uh, yeah. Age of Empires 2, I think, that was that this year? Age of Empires 2 remake. Except in this one, the alligator's easy to kill versus the remake. It's a pain in the ass. <laughs> uh, kind of shiny Philistine. Was that this year? I thought that was last year. I thought Ninja Warriors was last year. Kind of like Wild Guns Reloaded many years ago. Hey, liberal arts guy. You and these were kind of stupid? Yeah, I don't know about that, man. I thought having uh, the disc media was a great idea. I mean, you... you <laughs> it, it's kind of like the N64 cartridge versus PlayStation CD debate. I mean, UMDs versus Nintendo DS carts. You know, which one's going to be able to hold more data and thus give you more features? Now we're going to go and backtrack and say hi to our good friend Marvin because we got the key to be able to see him. Is Marvin even still alive? It looks like he would have bled out to death by now. <laughs> Meanwhile, while Marvin is by himself. And there's a trick in this part that we're going to uh, do also. Oh yeah, Mafia 1 and 2 got a remake. 
I never played any of the Mafia games. This is a lot of zombies here. You can get some N64 DD in the US Liberal Arts Guide. You, one, buy a flashcard, and then two, figure out a way to load the DD ROMs onto your cart and get them working. I think the uh, higher end EverDrives support that. <laughs> Liberal Arts Guide is always like, I wish we'd get this really obscure thing that never would have sold anything and made Nintendo any money in the US. That would have been great. <laughs> Well, no, I, I, I do actually deep down wish that we did get the N64 His DD. His arm is on me? And I still want to buy an N64 DD. But it's going to be one of the most expensive and most useless items I will ever have in my collection. Kind of like a Jaguar CD. <laughs> actually, you know what? That's, gonna, that's an interesting subject right there. What's more valuable, like, gaming-wise? As far as, like, what you can actually play on it? A Jaguar CD or a Nintendo 64 DD. Mm. I think they're about even. Like, they're almost e as equally useless as one another is. Well, they're both 64-bit systems, right? No, Jaguar's not really. Uh, Jaguar's a long story. <laughs> it's, it's, a, a, it's a whole mishmash of parts and how those parts communicate together. Will Smith I think it has like a 64 bus, 64-bit 64 bus somewhere, but it's like shoehorning in a bunch of other you know, parts that are supposed to talk to each other. It's it's a weird one. I'm not going to go into it here. Um, have you ever played Resident Evil Survivor, Brandon? That's yes. That's the first person shooter on on PlayStation. Yeah, I, I never liked it. I heard it was not that great. I played uh, Operation Raccoon City and I beat that one. Didn't like that one either. Ice Ducks, what do you expect from a game from the 90s and the 3D era? <laughs> Most games from this era back then don't hold up well at all visually. But they're still great fun to play. Parasite Eve was a pretty good looking game. But it's not a pretty good looking game anymore. Not anymore, it's not. <laughs> it's still a good game, though. It's a fantastic yeah. game. It's the best one in the series, I think. Mario 64 doesn't look that bad? Uh, I don't know. To each their own, I guess. Ocarina of Time? Hell yeah. Hell yeah, dude. I love, I love Ocarina of yeah, Time. I don't think Time. Ocarina of it looks that great either. <laughs> back in the day, it was I don't like... Honestly think, I don't think most 3D games from back then. Most console 3D games from back then don't hold up that well. I probably would take Ocarina of Time over... Visually... I mean, gameplay is a totally different scenario. Shadows of the. Empire. I still, I still have a major soft spot for this era, though. Like, I've been playing a lot of PS1 games lately, and a lot of Saturn 3D titles. All right, how about uh, Shadows of the Empire? Well, Silent Hill Three was also, yeah, Silent Hill Three was also the next generation. Yeah, Silent Hill. That was PS2. Silent Hill One came out just a few years after the first Resident Evil did, right? So Shiny Philistine says uh, the bow gun was pretty useful in this game, but pretty damn useless in Code Veronica. Hell yeah. Due to it only shooting one bolt at a time in that Dude, game. Dude, in Code Veronica, it sucks. <laughs> Code Veronica, I would have like 400, like, like, I, like I would collect, like, I would just collect ammo and not even use it. I'd be like, yeah, screw the bow gun in Code Veronica. Metal Gear Solid was amazing in terms of graphics. Yeah, I think it looks like crap. But again, to each their own. <laughs> and this guy's actually going to be relatively pretty quick, too, so... But yeah, no, I totally agree. Symphony of the Night, amazing looking game. Bum bum. There's Marvin. Uh... Why is my skin turning purple? Oh, well that was fast. Eat that, Marvin. Starving Marvin. <laughs> Marvin's dead. 
Yeah, Evan, ray tracing is super demanding. Even Quake 2 RTX, it's, uh, yeah. <laughs> That's at the time, Kazuya. I'm talking about how well it holds up now. And how it holds up now is it holds up terribly, visually. Yes, it was pretty impressive at the time. Just like this was, but, you know. They're not really great looking games today, is what I'm saying. I think it hold up. I can't spell. I can't write English. English is hard. English hard. Hard English. They did give Marvin a bit more pathos in the remake. Yeah. They do. They actually made him a uh, like a important character in the remake. Uh, I've got a lot of 3D games from back then that I think I still I still like the look of like Panzer Dragoon 2 on Saturn. I'm just kind of being extra snarky today just because I can. I don't think uh, the early, you know, eras of 3D have aged as well, though, as, say, uh, you know, some of the great pixels, uh, pixel art of the 16 and even the 32-bit era, you know? Someone had mentioned Symphony of the Night. That's a great game. I love Symphony of the Night. I'm not saying, like, they weren't impressive when they came out, though. I mean, there's a reason 3D was mega popular, you know? And there's a reason the industry moved in that direction. It's because it was impressive back then. It was new. It was different. It was an evolution. And that's what people expected from generation to generation. They expected bigger, better, different. I think Super It's not like now where everything's kind of homogenized. I think you know? Super Metroid is still like... Oh, here's our next generation. It looks uh, not that much different than the last one, but hey, we'll get there eventually. Just trust us on this one. <laughs> Super oh, Metroid. <laughs> I'm terribly sorry. I thought you were another one of those zombies. I am probably the second or third person in this playthrough that thought you were a zombie. That's me. <laughs> Just who are you? No, I'm also a necrophiliac. Telling me. It makes no difference. You'll end up just like all the others. If you change the blood color, does it actually change the blood color on that like cutscenes like this? I don't think so. You don't think so? I was told to look after her. Well, that'd well, be a question we should ask miserably. everyone out here. <laughs> I, I really don't pay attention to things like that. Actually, to be honest with you, I never played a game on Blue Blood or or or, or Green. Yeah. Okay. True it, beauty. As, <laughs> Her skin, nothing short of perfection. But it will soon putrefy, and she will turn. Uh, I don't think Moore's Law is necessarily behind. dead. Um, there's quite a few tech channels on YouTube that I watch there that I don't know. Well, they, don't, they don't think it's dead quite yet, but it will get there. But yeah, I mean, along with like higher development costs, bigger teams required, you know, it, it's not as easy. Like at the end of this upcoming generation, when we look back at it, it will be leaps and bounds better than the current generation. I mean, I mean, there is a big jump in tech. It's just it's going to take a while to get the most out of it. Please, I'd really like to be alone now. So which one's Resident Evil 7? Is it Biohazard? That was the first person one. I actually got you. No, I had mom get you a copy of that, I think. You barely played that one. I know for some reason Brandon didn't really get into it. it uh, it's just... It's, it's... Hmm. It, it's different. It's different. So the, the AMD... Uh, architecture that the current gens are on, PS4 uh, and Xbox One, that was outdated when it came out. Um, the Zen 2 architecture that the next gen consoles are running on just runs leaps and bounds and runs circles around that old hardware. So just from like a processing standpoint, it's a huge upgrade. Um, and two, I mean, the same with the graphics architecture. Um huge upgrade over last gen so you know we will start seeing much more impressive things 
uh, especially when it comes to resolution. So. Wait. Let me go. We are brothers. Yes, Please, this is my yep. brother Brandon. I'm not a zombie. You're safe now. Leon, come in. I found the girl, and I cleared the wreckage that was blocking the corridor. Got it. We're actually pretty close to being halfway through the game right now. Oh, cool. My yeah. name's Claire. What's yours? Sherry, do you know where your parents are? Because the second half of the game the goes pretty quick. Mm -hmm. Near the city yeah. limits. What? Say that again? Uh, the second half of the game goes pretty quick. Oh, okay. Yeah. What are you doing here? So what you're saying is we're gonna end up doing Leon's campaign as well. No, oh, no. Nah. <laughs> Damn it! I thought I could uh, coerce him into doing that. From the look of things, I'd say she was probably right, but it's. I mean, this might be a halfway point. I, I could be wrong. I mean. But there's something out there. Maybe we're only at like a twenty percent, and you have four more hours to go. Larger than any of those zombies. Maybe we're at the end of the game right now, and the game just goes, you know. What was that? They got dumped. Hey, Crestline. It's here. Sherry, wait. Leon, blue blood run. Parasite will take too long. Yeah, Brandon doesn't like long streams. Well, Parasite Eve <laughs> should have been second half be as quick as the first half. Otherwise, it wouldn't be half. This is true. This is very true. Maybe it just feels like it goes quicker, but it doesn't actually go quicker. It's like when I was working yesterday, the last two hours just went super fast, even though it didn't feel like the first two hours. That Look, went super slow. It's like all the small things. You go back and forth, back and forth. Versus like the rest of the game is like, go, 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 you know. Even even the end of the game is... is oh, uh, they drop F-bombs in the remake? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they do that. Chief? It kind of turned no, me I mean, down. I guess that is kind of realistic. If I was in that situation, I'd be dropping F-bombs left and right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know what you guys mean, though, about it being kind of a turn-off. Yeah. It was like when I uh, watched Castlevania on Netflix for the first time, they were dropping F-bombs. Uh, I was like, what? What's going on here? Was fuck even a word back then? <laughs> back in the... <laughs> Hundreds like, of years ago? I don't know. <laughs> like like in Robocop hearing uh, Clarence Bond again so. saying... Well, that's different. I mean, he's basically like a a, an underworld you know, criminal. But that was like the only movie back then you would hear It made like sense that. for a character like him, but like Trevor Belmont. You know. Oh, yeah. Trevor Belmont. Not exactly what I would expect, so... Good old Trevor Belmont. He was cussing before cussing was even a thing. Oh, by the way, I'm still looking at this Wikipedia article for the N64 version here, and it says that um, uh, the Nintendo 64 version adjusts its display resolution depending on the number of polygonal models currently on screen. So it's like it's got a dynamic resolution, um, which isn't something you really heard of a lot back then. Um, it supports the console's expansion pack accessory for a maximum resolution of 640 by 480 during gameplay. Um, that must be why, like, I'm seeing the uh, the sort of like the interlacing artifacts. You see, kind of like horizontal lines, and um, that's for games that run at 480i. Like, Killer Instinct Gold is one of those games. You'll see it on its title screen. Um. Very interesting. So this must be running at 640 by 480 in game. Uh, other visual enhancements include smoother character animations and sharper perspective corrected textures for the 3D models. Uh, the Nintendo 64 version is the only one to use surround sound with the soundtrack converted to Dolby Surround by Chris Holzbeck. Oh, very nice. Oh, and two other guys. Rudolf Stember and Thomas Engel. Uh, the team reworked the sound set from the ground up to provide each instrument with a higher sample rate than on the PlayStation, thus resulting in higher quality music. Well, for the record, Austin will kick my ass in about any in any fighting game we play. Austin is like a 2D fighting 
man, when it comes to like the craziness of like, I would never have any like maybe occasionally. Would yeah, play. Brandon never plays fighting games. Uh, like ever. maybe maybe I might once or twice in a goal I match slappers only maybe. <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of a fighting game yeah we do slappers only <laughs> <laughs> and I'm on my you see my characters that, uh, underneath sliding around in circles <laughs> and, and going night too I'm going to actually uh, go get some water because uh, I've been drinking uh, Diet Coke all literally all day, like almost 12 hours now. So I need to get some hydration. Can you um, give me uh, one of the... Uh... You want another cider? Yeah. Okay, I'll another, cool. I'll get another one of your beers. Okay, I'll be right back. <laughs> and you don't have to get up, right? You're fine. Just stay put. <laughs> I got plenty of room back here. Hey, Patchouli. I, I gotta stretch for a second anyway. Okay. Quick. Yeah. Stretching's always good. Keeps the blood flow going. All right. The stretching is good. Back to back to the game, the good old game of Resident Evil Two. Is everyone looking forward to seeing that new uh, Netflix series with James Hetfield in it? There's gotta be someone out there that says, "Yeah, come on, let's go." <laughs> James Hatfield is a is a sheriff in a new uh, serial killer kind of movie coming out on a uh, Netflix. Looks pretty good. Apparently, it's supposed to be pretty good. <laughs> God damn, these dogs are vicious. Assholes. God damn. That dog kicked my ass. <laughs> Jeez Louise. The same one thing, the new Resident Evil movie. They're making a new Resident Evil movie. Is it with uh, Mila Jokovic as in a new one, or is it supposed to be like a different kind of Resident Evil movie? Like the Resident Evil, the Resident Evil movie that came out a couple of years ago. Man, it was all right. A reboot? Oh, that'd be kind of cool. Alright, you yours, Brandon. Oh, thank you. Hell yeah.
Oh yeah. I just think it'd be awesome if they made a fresh Resident Evil game with the horror elements of Resident Evil 2. And actually just make it just off the like off the chain, you know, just like Cause there's a lot of room, e even Parasite Eve, they could easily remake Parasite Eve 1 and make it totally crooked. Like the opera scene in the first Parasite Eve where the uh, where Eve is singing and like everyone burns on fire. Imagine seeing that like in a, in a well done cinematic. That'd be f amazing. <laughs> there's so many crooked things they could do to make it to make horror great. They just gotta put the time and effort into it, that's all they gotta do. It can be done. The first Parasite Eve Man was awesome. I, I just love the first one. The, the, uh... It's just the way that the first Parasite Eve carried itself was unique. The second one was alright. It had good horror, like, more of a horror element to it. You could definitely tell, like, the second one was focusing more on the suspense and the horror. Because there are some parts in the second one that are kind of, like, little... Like, weird. But I like the the stat system in the first one. Third birthday? Nah, I haven't bothered playing third birthday. They made Ada look so much different in that one than opposed to uh, the first one. But the gameplay still looked really good though, in in the in third birthday. And the story and plot still seemed still seemed alright. Sherry, I've been looking everywhere for you. I was so worried. We've got to go now, honey, okay? If we stay here, that monster will find us. Let's go. No, I won't. What's the matter? <laughs> Don't you trust me? <laughs> it's not that, Claire. It's because of my daddy. He's over there. I heard him call my name. Ugh. Daddy must have been attacked by the monster. I should just bring out the Switch and play Xenoblade Chronicles while you're playing Resident <laughs> Evil. <laughs> there you go. Wait, Sherry. Don't go alone. My favorite Resident I've stopped Evil following game it a long time ago. My favorite Resident Evil game would be uh, probably Resident Evil Code Veronica. Oh man, Code Veronica was just unique. I've always I've always liked Claire, and uh, the storyline in Code Veronica is. Pretty, uh, it's pretty good. It's pretty twisted, too. I will say the first Resident Evil remake from GameCube and then the HD version of it. That's a good version. That is like the atmosphere is pretty amazing in that. Have you, have you beat that one before? No, it's, it's a long one. I've only been part four and Revelation. That's it. 
So all the others I've barely touched. Part five, no. Part, part, part five. one was the one I played the most, aside from those. Part um, five kind of cracked me out, because you see the uh, the zombie hijacking the tractor trailer, and you get it. There's a scene in the game where you're Leon, you have to shoot the zombie out of the, out of the, uh, out of the tractor trailer. <laughs> it's just silly things like that. It's just kind of like, yeah, okay. <laughs> Hard time getting into the first game? There's something wrong with you, Kazuya. That's why you're having a hard time getting into it. I would definitely. I was actually the opposite. I had a hard time getting into part two because I was like, it doesn't start nearly as smoothly as the first game does. The first one. <clears throat> I'm gonna get part two again and try it again. Oh, Xenoblade Chronicles two. Yeah, it's it's on Switch. Hmm. Not X. Not Xenoblade Chronicles X. Oh, that so one's they're... a different beast altogether. Oh, okay. Yeah, so... there's an actual Xenoblade 2 on the Switch. Oh, yeah, okay. Brandon doesn't have a Switch. He's not too familiar with the library. Next, I know, because you beat uh, X, right? No, I, I put like 35 hours into X. I still have a long way to go in that game. That's like me playing Metroid Prime 2. I still got a long way to go. <laughs> yeah, and I, like, I played about 35 hours of X right when it came out. Um, and then I never went back to it for some reason. I just got caught up in other things. That's it. So one of these days I'd like to go back to it. And that's why I like Parasite Eve because Parasite Eve started perfectly. You see the crowd burning on fire. Yeah. <laughs> I, I even remember that. I was like, whoa, <laughs> this game's crazy. <laughs> Yeah, I was always wanted to go back and try to beat that one. I never did. You don't see a whole lot of games like. It's not that I don't like RPGs. It's that Sherry, I'm very particular okay? about them. Did you find your dad? Yes, I'm okay, but I couldn't find him. But I did find something else for you here. Thanks, sweetie. Now, why don't you come over here? I want you to stay with me. The plot is huge in the first scene of Lake Chronicles. There are so many yeah. twists and turns. It's a very, very long journey. So... Don't worry. I'll find another way. But personally, I don't know. I kind of grew attached to the characters right away. I liked their personalities. You know, hey, they're... Jerry, come back. Most of the characters Jerry, in the game are likable. Mm-hmm. Unlike a lot of RPGs I play, where like your main protagonist is just a doofus, or or the story is just very cliché, you know. That's like Final Fantasy Thirteen. You got the character named Snow, and, and then to com get combine so with annoying. it, you have like bad soundtracks or just mediocre soundtracks. Or annoying characters. Xenoblade Chronicles One just did everything right to me. Like I just I don't know. I just played it, enjoyed it. I didn't have to think about it. Xenoblade Chronicles is a great game. I, I, I really enjoyed playing that whole game. And I'm going to get my ass kicked. I might actually die here. Only because it's one of the cheapest parts in the whole game, I yeah. think. VJ says N64 version of this is the only one with infinite ammo cheats. Really? That's interesting. You can enter at the load screen. <clears throat> yeah, and I'm definitely going to pick up part two again, Micah. For sure. Dun, 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 but yeah, in part two, right at the very beginning of the game, you've got that crew that you join up with, and they're all just so unlikable. Um, granted, I mean, they end up being villains. This is like 30 minutes into the game, so I'm not really spoiling much, but it's just, I don't know. The very start of the first Xenoblade Chronicles, the intro plays out, and, uh, you know... Just the characters feel very noble, and uh, you know, and the way they they like play off each other is just I don't know. I liked it. I enjoyed it. <clears throat> We're gonna head on back down, head on back down, kill the liquors, go to the autopsy room, and we're gonna get the uh, 
the machine gun and the inventory expansion. The big thing about the Xenoblade Chronicles games for me, the first one in particular, uh, was just the gameplay was just so much fun. Like, I just grinded and grinded and grinded because it was fun. I'd see an enemy and I'd run up to him. I'd intentionally engage battle because the combat was super fun. And I'd always get a reward. I'd always get a treasure chest of some kind. So, and then the music, the uh, the big higher level bosses like scattered throughout the game that you could sometimes run into and you should probably run past, but sometimes you'd be like, I'm going to keep trying and trying and trying and get my ass kicked over and over and over again. Damn, Kazuya. Well, you might as well just stop playing the game, man. I, I wouldn't say that it really changes that much from where you are at the game. I mean, there are lots of twists and turns story-wise, but if you're, if you're bored to tears right now, then there's something wrong with this picture. If you're not enjoying the gameplay, then you should probably just stop playing. Seriously. For me, like, I, I was just gripped by the gameplay. It was so much fun. And then everything else I, I enjoyed about it as well. Hmm. Yeah, Xenogears and Xenosaga are very different, though. They're, like, more turn-based RPGs. Yeah, Xenoblade Chronicles also... So Xenoblade Chronicles, for anyone that hasn't played it, is, uh... It's kind of like a mesh of, you know, classic Japanese JRPGs with Western sensibilities. Like, uh... Those ground you know, the too. open worlds of, you know, something like Morrowind or, or whatever. Oh, okay. Um, it was a combination of the two styles. And um, so it's not a typical turn-based JRPG, but it's not also full-blown, like, dungeon crawler, you know. So it's um, Western-style RPG. So would uh, Grandia be considered a, a, a JRPG? Yeah, it is. It definitely. Yeah. 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 That's. A, but that has like a more real time sort of action combat system, doesn't it? The first Grandia. The first one. The, yeah. Well, the first. I'm not sure about part two or. or I beat well. Grandia one, I think, is far better than the second one. The second one's not bad, but man, the first Grandia is amazing. Wow. If Chronicles is like the franchise is Final Fantasy 7, Chronicles 2 is like it's Final Fantasy 8. Both are great. Yeah. But there's a big but. <laughs> hey Mike, what's going on, man? Haven't seen you in a little while. Shouldn't take 20 hours for Xenoblade Chronicles to hook you. If it hasn't after that much time, it probably isn't your thing. Yeah, that's my logic too, Mike. Like I was hooked right away. And I stayed hooked for the whole game. And even after I beat the game, I played it for another 80 hours just to keep doing stuff. It was that much fun for me. I tried going after um, some of the post-game super bosses. You know, I tried getting to... I tried uncovering, like, all the areas of the map. I tried, uh, you know, upgrading things. Other, other, other things I could upgrade, I tried doing that. I tried doing more of the quest lines, the side quests. Shining in the Darkness. I never did play that. Constantine says, uh, Grandia's battle system was superb. Grandia 2 was just a completely different beast than the first one. But Grandia, I think, is just amazing. This is very, very good game. Um, so the Saturn version, I think, got translated recently. Um, supposedly the Saturn version of that was, um, uh, people prefer it over the PlayStation version. I think it originally came out on Saturn. Uh, it was one of those games that first came out on Saturn in Japan. So it was designed around the Saturn's hardware, which is very different from PlayStation's. It's kind of like a Thunder Force 5 scenario. Hmm. Let me double check that. I want to make sure I'm giving out the right information on that. Um, but people always praise the Saturn version over the PS1 version. One of the few instances where the Saturn version was better, apparently. 
Yeah, it first came out on the Sega Saturn in uh, 97, then was ported to the PS1 in 99. Yep. So I'll have to get the translated version, and we'll have to like play it sometime. Because I've got the Satiator cart now, so mm. we can just load it up. And uh, I haven't actually showed you the Satiator in person yet. Oh, I don't think you have. I'll show it to you after we're done with the stream. Um, what other Saturn ports were better? Uh, Contra Legacy of War. I know that's that one's not saying much. Um, Thunder Force 5. Um, I know there are probably... There's probably like another one or two. Um, but those are the main ones. Those three. Uh, Lunar 2, I think... That's a good game. Uh, Lunar 2 used the MPEG card slot on the Saturn for better video and stuff like that. That was probably... I don't know for sure if it, like, it was actually better. Brandon, do you remember if Lunar 2 was better on Saturn or PS1? You, you played both, Yeah, right? I think the, the graphics in Lunar 2 are just a little sharper for some reason. I mean, like... I remember... I don't know if like the TV I had at the, at the time was just like... Was... was was different or is this like something about the Saturn like better graphics detail or yeah we're not talking like additional content we're just talking kind of like what game was uh was like truly like uh, I don't know yeah, yeah when you, once you start getting into like additional content that's one thing but I'm mainly talking about games that were developed from the ground up with the Saturn hardware in mind so the way Saturn does uh you know 3d graphics and whatnot is very different from how the playstation does it and it's got multiple video display processors and how they're used will determine you know how some games will pull off special effects and because of that setup um you've got these really nice like infinite ground plane special effects kind of like mode 7 on super nintendo but on crack that just can't really be done easily on the playstation the way that it is in like thunder force 5 uh you know, Panzer Dragoons, Vi, things like that. So if a game was built for the Sega Saturn and then it was ported to PlayStation, they had, they had to make a lot of concessions because the hardware was vastly different. And so they couldn't pull off those exact same types of effects. Um, so that's what I'm mainly um, thinking about, is games like built for the Saturn in mind. Just like when you had games built for the PlayStation in mind, when they were brought to Saturn, they were usually very inferior... Uh, I mean, the first Resident Evil is a good example. Um, I, I think they still pulled that one off pretty well, because again, it is mostly 2D backdrops. So like, even the low, with the lower polygon counts on the um, the Saturn's character models, I think it still looks fine for the system. Um, but uh, man, what are some other 3D titles ordered from PS1 to Saturn? Um, I know there are a bunch. Uh, Need, the original Need for Speed is a good example. It looks uh considerably worse on saturn considerably more basic it still it still looks solid for the system but it can't really hold a candle next to the ps1 version there are, there are quite a few games like that ps1 3d titles the wipeout games don't look nearly as good on the saturn as they do on the playstation you know stuff like that yeah the ram carts were were nice shiny philistine for sure mostly 2d fighter fighters use those uh, not too many 3D games took advantage of those, but yeah, great for 2D stuff. Oh, Clockwork Knight was great. Clockwork Knight was a fun one. Good grief almighty. If oh man, Final Fantasy V is more your style. See, that one was more in me to tears. I tried playing through that one recently. I think I put like seven or eight hours onto it. Mm -hmm. And I just... Yeah, I just stopped playing it. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, this doesn't, this isn't doing it for me at all. I've always heard it was kind of like the weak one of the Super Nintendo trilogy. Well, uh, uh, not counting Mystic Quest, we just pretend, let's just leave that one out of the discussion. I have a soft spot for that game, but I just made four or five or six. Yeah, the job system, yeah. Their job system was a little interesting. The solution is center, right, then left. Thank you. Yeah, I did a Let's Play of the first Clockwork Knight. Uh, 
couple months ago, guys. Mike didn't even know the Lunar games were on Saturn. You only played them on Sega CD and PS1. Yeah, they came out on Saturn in Japan. Thank you, Shining, for helping us out. <laughs> or else I probably would have been here for a minute. Uh, Micah, Mystic Quest is just, like, dumb fun. It's got some, uh... I like the visual style in it. It's simple, but effective. Um... The combat is, like, mind-numbingly dumb. But it's still fun. There's a lot of charm. Like, the, the enemy character sprites change during the battle as you do damage to them. And the soundtrack is killer. Like, I love the music in that game. And the final boss is easy to cure. It's his cure and he's dead. <laughs> That's the best weapon in Mystic West. Hey, Andy, welcome back. Or is it heal? Was it heal or cure? Like, cure 3 does like 4,000 damage on the final boss. That's like one of the uh, Easter eggs in the game. Yeah, you just heal the final boss because he's a zombie. He's undead. Um... Let me scroll the chat. I feel like I've missed some stuff. Uh, let's see. Uh, I don't think 79 Center is not fun to play or look at. It just doesn't look as good as the PlayStation version. Because of those, you know, they had to make concessions because the the vastly different hardware. But yeah, I mean, it's uh, Symphony of the Night on PlayStation is objectively better looking. And it runs smoother. It's less slow down. But there is extra content. I have a soft spot for Symphony on the Saturn because it was the first version I owned back in the day. Um, and I streamed it last year, actually. I did a full live stream of it here. And I enjoyed it. I would actually enjoyed it a lot more than I expected to. Uh... By the way, we will uh, we'll probably stream the PSP version of Symphony of the Night this upcoming Wednesday, so watch out for that. I think it's going to be this upcoming Wednesday. But yeah, Mega Man 8 was better on Saturn. It, I don't think it was inherently better in terms of like graphics, um, but it did have some extra content. It did have some extra content. You got some like classic Mega Man 2 bosses in it. Yeah, Michael says, you th I think you got this game memorized, Brandon. <laughs> Alright, let's go ahead and scroll back down. I played this game a lot. <laughs> Unlimited Saga, wasn't that the first one on PS2? The first Saga game that came out on PS2? I think that was the one. It's like Saga Frontier? Oh yeah, Unlimited Saga. Or am I thinking of so, yeah, 2002 role-playing game? That's yeah. the one that was like was super weird and got really bad reviews. And we all tried playing it. We all worked in like video game stores at the time, and we all tried messing around with it. Yeah, Romancing Saga was the next one. That one was apparently better. But yeah, Unlimited Saga was like so. Good thing we don't need to go back there again. <laughs> it's like for people that's like, oh damn, I wired the wrong, I I wired the uh, the wrong shutters. <laughs> you think Symphony Night is fugly on Saturn? I mean, it's not always fugly. I mean, there are effects that are absolutely fugly compared to PlayStation, but there are a lot of effects that look fine. They look just like they do on PlayStation. <laughs> and actually, I like the blood effects more in the Saturn one, um, because in the PlayStation version, I think they're sort of transparent. And in the Saturn version, there's just like this thick, solid red, and it just it looks so much chunkier, and I love it. Like, when you use Dark Resurrection, you start chopping, like, the zombie soldiers, or chopping through the zombie soldiers. It's just... Oh, it's great. Austin, Brandon, the game that disappointed you the most. Uh, I don't know. I have a lot of those. Yeah. Castlevania Curse of Darkness. <laughs> I turned around on that one. <laughs> Metroid Prime 2. Yeah, Brandon doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> Brandon, uh... 
has always had a mixed relationship with, or a rocky relationship with Metroid Prime 2. Yeah, it's like, well, like, years ago, I had, I played a game, and I was like, what the heck? And then I was like, well, you know, play the game again, and then... Hey, I know exactly what you mean, Micah. Yeah. I know exactly what you mean. But not every part of the game has that faux transparency effect, so... No, I've got a lot of other disappointments. I mean, I don't know. Anything that has... A, any game with a sequel or multiple, you know, subsequent follow-ups, like, chances are there's at least one game there that disappoints me. Um, like De like Devil May Cry 2, for example. Oh, Devil May Cry 2. Like, I was super disappointed with that. I think the first uh, Devil May Cry was great. The third one was a lot better than the second one. Yeah. Um, I'm then, Giga Wing 2. Uh, I, love I was a huge fan of the first one, so it was actually kind of disappointing to me at, at first. No, I, I, it's since has grown on me. It's been 20 years, but Thunder Force 6, um, Giga Wing Generations, uh, um, there, there are a lot of ones, actually. I mean, let's see. I'm trying to think. Sonic Adventure 2. Um, what are some Quake Two, <laughs> Quake Four, uh, Quake Two, <laughs> um, some of the newer Wolfenstein games, Devil May Cry Five. That's actually that was a really disappointing one for me. I didn't like it that much. I don't think it's objectively good. I think the combat's good, but I think the execution of the rest of the game was pretty, pretty piss poor. Oh, yeah, 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 Final Fantasy 2. Definitely. Definitely, definitely disappointment. Yeah. Like, like you're talking... The like, Japanese NES yeah. or Famicom Final Fantasy 2, yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, I wasn't disappointed by Doom 3 when it came out. Doom 3 is one of those I loved it when it came out, but I started to love it much less as the years went on. I'd say Final Fantasy 2 holds a cake, though. <laughs> Uh, Chris Lane, you don't have to play the first three Devil May Cry games, but you do have to play Devil May Cry 1 and 3. Don't play part 2. You're okay. I'm glad to see you're safe, Claire. I'm glad you're not a little brat like most kids are in video games. <laughs> Well, I figured he was just saying, you know, talking about the PS2 games. But yes, uh, I liked Devil May Cry 4 a lot. But I also haven't played through it since it first came out. But I did play play through it many times when it first came out. It's another one I want to go back to and, and try to do. Maybe I'll try to do it Where? before next October. Because I hate waiting until October I'm to do spooky games. There. Stay here and wait for me, okay? Um, Halo 5 was a big disappointment for me. Even Halo 2 was kind of a disappointment. You know, I enjoyed it, but I didn't enjoy it nearly as much as the second one. Or, the, I didn't enjoy it nearly as much as the first one. Oh, the first Sonic Adventure is great. I have a lot... Yeah, Diablo 3 was another one. But I've turned around on that one a little bit. Mmm, tasty. I think I'm gonna puke though. I ate too much. Okay, that's a little effed up. I like it. I like it. Oh. I'm trying to think of like really big disappointments so. though. Um They wanna see something really messed up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So you've made it this far. Not bad, girl. But I'm not letting anyone leave my town. Everyone's gonna die. Calm down, Chief. What happened? He needs a jewel sandwich. <laughs> you couldn't understand what 
happened. Those monsters from Umbrella have destroyed my beautiful town. The master of unlocking. How could they do that to me after everything I've done for them? So it's true. You have been working with Umbrella. So it's you true. You people. are a necrophilia. What is it? Tell me. That's disgusting. You must know. It's the agent that can turn humans into the ultimate bio weapon. Superior to the T virus in every way. Dr. William Birkin is the genius behind the project. William Birkin? I'm sure you've already seen this little girl running around here somewhere. Sherry, isn't it? In case you haven't already figured it out, the monster that's been tearing my precinct apart is yet another product of the G-Virus. An ultimate bio-weapon. Umbrella must be trying to cover its tracks. But if I have to go, I'm going to take you with me. Oh, my chest can't take the pain. <laughs> okay, that's badass. <laughs> Inglorious HD. <laughs> Uh, I'm not gonna go down yet. I think there's some uh, stuff up here I can collect. I think there's like, a, there's, there's, there's like a mini boss down here. Like a sub boss or something. I'm still trying to think of other games that really disappointed me, but I didn't want to say anything during the cutscene. I also wasn't sure what was gonna happen because I haven't seen this before. He's got everything down here saws, everything. It's nuts. Nah, I don't got my grenade launcher. Oh well, let's just use those. Oh! Mega Man X6, I hated that game when it came out. Oh, that was one of man. my biggest disappointments. But I've since turned around on that game too. But that was a huge disappointment for me. Mm. That was one of the biggest I could think of. And X5 to a lesser extent. X5 felt very lazy compared to X4 in terms of production values. Ugh. Nuke Nukem Forever? I was a little bit kinder to that game than a lot of people. Because I never was as attached to Duke Nukem 3D as a lot of people are. Yeah, Mortal Kombat 4. Yeah, I wasn't impressed by that. I didn't like how it felt. Yeah, Final Fantasy X, I got a lot of really good reviews back in the day, and I knew a lot of people that liked it, but as time's going on, I've talked to a lot of people that don't like it so much. I found that's kind of like how... Which game? Final Fantasy X. I, oh, I found that yeah, that's kind of yeah, yeah. how like the whole Final Fantasy series has been after, you know, from 8 and on, I would say. 8 was the first one that really seemed to divide mm -hmm. people pretty hard. Like... I heard people saying it was the worst game ever made to, I, like, it was their favorite RPG ever, you know? I really enjoyed Part 8 a lot. Didn't you not enjoy it at first? Oh, no, I, I loved it. You loved it at first? I, I thought, maybe, it is, well, or was it 9 that you didn't like that much at first, but it grew on you? Yeah, yeah, it was definitely, uh, Resident Evil 9 was, uh, I mean, I mean, not Resident Final 9. Fantasy 9. <laughs> Final Fantasy 9, but yeah, Final Fantasy 9, um, because, you know what? After every after Final Fantasy VII, every Final Fantasy game had its own little, uh, its own little gimmick. Yeah, they always want to change the stat system around and make it all different. Ten is just the most ten ten stat system stat system was easiest to build. You gain AP points and you unlock abilities and you, your stat chart is infinite. No limitations. Mm -hmm. So it's easy to upgrade, upgrade, upgrade. Easy to get used to. Yeah. Final Fantasy VII, as long as you have 
Ultima, you're fine, you don't really need anything else, and nice the round table. <laughs> it's be very strong. Uh, Final Fantasy VIII's learn to uh, equip all the uh, good elementals. There's tricks in, in all of them to help. Yeah, Game Eagle, I feel the same way. Uh, that was one of my big issues with X5, is that it was just boring. Um, but also, the production value in just, like, your teammates just talking to each other and whatnot um, felt like such a downgrade from X4. Like, the X4 had these really nice animated hand-drawn cutscenes and stuff like that, and you didn't have any of that in X5. And then you were stopped all the time mid-level, so Alia could talk to you. Hey, X, you should shoot that door that's clearly right in front of you. You would clearly never, ever, ever try to do that in a game where shooting is the main thing you do. So let me tell you about it. And having that every five minutes, like... Uh, I do like the game now, but I, I it was... Yeah. With X6, I didn't realize this back in the day, but... Now, as, you know, you know, 15, 20 years later, like, I enjoy the extra challenge of X6, and it makes it much more interesting to play. So I actually really like X6 now, but I hated it when it came out. It was so disappointing. Found a way to the sewer. Follow us later. Claire. Claire. Wait. Yeah, and X5 is just boring in comparison, so... I'm gonna go back and heal up, save it, and then I'm gonna use the restroom real quick. Okay. Well. Wait, did I just go through that wall over there? Is that, is that a glitch? Oh, never mind. No, you're good. Yeah. Sherry, get out of my way. <laughs> Carlos says he couldn't get into Final Fantasy IX. The SD characters design. Oh, did nothing for you. They actually killed the mood and the story as far as you're concerned. The, the characters were... Yeah, because Final Fantasy game. VIII, they went more towards like a, a realistic character style. Yeah. Final Fantasy VII was kind of like chibi in a way, but like super blocky to kind of had its weird charm. But then part nine, the characters were... They kind of went back in that direction, but they were way more detailed and looked... Like kids. Yeah. This would look really... And then like... Part ten, they kind of. I really like the characters. Part ten, they went back more to that, towards that realistic design. But surprisingly, I really do enjoy the characters in part fifteen a lot. Like Gladius is just a badass. I don't Andy care. says, by the way, hi Brandon. Hey, what's going on? And Andy, what's up? Thank you for tuning in. Oh, that didn't do anything. Was it the uh, Star Ocean he had? That oh, Star that Ocean game looked really good when you were playing it. Oh, that game was awesome! I, I love Star Ocean. The first one Ocean. on PlayStation, and the and the storyline just blows me away, man. It's mind blowing. All right. Yeah, I was disappointed by Crackdown Three, but I never played parts one or two. I just saw gameplay before it came out. And I thought it looked awesome, then I got it, and I was just. I mean, it was moderately fun, but. It was only 30 FPS. It didn't really look that great. It, you know, for a big AAA title, it was. It didn't feel like one. I don't know. I'll probably get it again because it's cheap. And I'll try it again. I think I still have a save file for it. So we don't need this anymore. Press Alliance says hi, Brandon. It's good to see hey. you play Resident Evil again on stream. Yeah, anytime. Let's get our usual get up here. Oh, I'm gonna. Oh, you need the bathroom? Yeah. Okay. You're stepping on the guy. Oh, yeah. sorry. That's all right. Yeah, I'm gonna use the restroom real quick. Okay. And... So, could you uh bring the trash can a little bit closer here? Yeah, yeah, sure. Have I? Oh yeah, we love. Well, we love the old East games. I haven't played many of the new ones, but we'll talk about that when Brandon gets back. Hold on a second. Hey, and Brandon, when you come back, how about you grab me a cider? Uh, Brandon is the bigger Donkey Kong Country fan. Yeah, 
because he's actually played just well he hasn't <clears throat> he's played a lot more of the super nintendo ones i've actually dabbled more with country returns and tropical freeze than he has um but yeah the first donkey kong country is one of my favorite games of all time but I didn't get into parts two or three. I, I just didn't like them that much in comparison to the first one. I didn't like how the second one started off on a pirate ship, whereas the first one you're in the jungle and you got like this awesome funky music and um, just smoother level design, if you ask me. It's like I just, you know, could, didn't get into part two, not just from like an aesthetic standpoint, but also gameplay. Didn't feel as, as good to me. Um, but, you know, I, I've seen people stream it recently, and I do want to go back and try it again. And then when I saw my friends playing DKC3, it was just like, that looks even more clunky and less interesting. Um, I wasn't really a big fan of, like, the, uh, you know, the addition of, like, being able to explore around the, the maps. Like the world map i like the simple mario 3 style world map or mario world style which donkey kong country one did i just you know i just wanted to go from level to level quickly like you do in dkc1 so but i'll i'll give them a try again and then i'll eventually probably let's play them depending on how long they take or or live stream them if they're like a few hours long then i'll probably just live stream them yeah that's my donkey kong country story for you or in regards to parts two and three. Micah says DKC3 was an adventure game forced upon a platformer. Yeah, I, you know, someone I follow on Twitter recently went through DKC3 for the first time and I, he sounded like he was very underwhelmed by it um, after really enjoying part two, apparently, so. Is it time for some patchy action? I mean, we might do. Let's see. Um. No, she is. Hi, everybody! I can pretend like I'm petting my cat. Yeah, she's chill right now. Dude, you guys should have seen, uh, my friend Edon came over earlier today. Um, he got the Mario Kart uh, Live Home Circuit Edition, or whatever the hell they call it. Um, it's basically this AR game where you drive a little RC car around your room, and it pops up on your TV screen or your Switch screen. And uh, the patchouli was running around. <laughs> We were bumping the car into Patchouli. It was hilarious seeing Patchouli on the big screen. <laughs> Alright, hold on a second, guys. Hold on a second, guys. <laughs> I had to blow my nose. I'm trying to save you guys an, an earache. Brandon was talking while the mic was muted. Yeah, here I am. <laughs> I do write music, you know. So they asked, well, first they asked about the East games, but then they asked about the Donkey Kong Country games, and they asked, uh, you're probably the bigger Donkey Kong Country fan, mm. at least when it comes to the Super Nintendo games. You've actually beaten all three on Super Nintendo, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What are your thoughts on them? You've been tearing through those cookies, by the way. You're going to become a diabetic like me. Okay. Cheers. There's lots of sugar in these two, I bet. Oh, yeah. 15 grams of carbs. Not as much as a soda, though. That's good. I don't do this often, though. But when I do... But when I do, I go all out. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, it's blood orange. That's pretty good. Dude, Breath of the Wild was amazing. 
Mm. You need to play Breath of the Wild, Brandon. Oh, yeah. Never got into Zelda? You should play at least the first one, Ego. First Zelda is so good. Because it's like you got the exploration elements of later games, but it's also challenging at the same time. You played through the first Zelda recently, didn't mm -hmm. you? Yep. Would you agree with that statement? It's a great game. It's a very good game. Classic. Except, um, I recommend playing with the, with the, with the controller and not keyboard. Because it's, that's how I beat Zelda. The keyboard. And it was a pain. Uh, like, the new Breath of the Wild, yeah, it'll probably be pushed back again and again. I mean, the Breath of the Wild 1 was a massive game. It's understandable it took so long to be finished. Oh, man. Link to the past. Yeah, same here, Micah. Same yeah, here. Absolutely. Oh, but they said... Uh... Did you, have you played the East games? Um, so, I've mainly played just the first two not East Books 1 and 2, they're on the same package, but I'd say East 1 and East 3, those are the main ones I played. And I did, I think, almost every console version of East 3 on my channel here, mm -hmm. even the Famicom version from Japan. Um, oh, sorry. Had it on Patchouli. Oh. Um, it's all good. But I also loved Oath and Felgana, which was a remake of East 3. Fantastic game. Yeah. That sucks. <laughs> Where are you? Jerry! Claire! I'm here! You think you bought a GameCube just because you wanted to play Twilight Princess? Well, you eventually came out on the Wii as well. Man, I had they a... They actually both came out on the same day. I had a Twilight <laughs> Princess urge about six months ago. I was like... I've got the HD version of Wii U, man. I've got multiple Wii U systems. You can borrow. I got three Wii U's now. I got to finish. One of them's Japanese, though. I got to manage Metroid Prime two and three first. Yeah, once so you finish that, I promise myself I got. Honestly, be... when you finish that, you shouldn't even do Twilight Princess. You should just play Breath of the Wild. I can do that. Yeah, we can do that. That'd be the better choice. <sighs> and then when you're done with that, you can take my Twilight Princess HD. I can do that too. But you gotta play the masterpiece first. See, Twilight Princess was a little hard for me to get into because of the whole light mode and dark mode kind of thing. Oh, what the heck is this? Oh my goodness. Was it your first death? Or did you die before? That's my first death. Uh, when's the last time you saved? Right before this part. Okay. Yeah. Because this part was always, like, this part's always a cheese part. Like, no matter what. Kasheri's always... Like, I don't know why they made a game like that. To, you know, to be honest with you. All right, Wait, what? It was apparently due to limitations on cards that they chose to make Link to the Past linear. Hey, is it linear? It's not. It's not linear in the sense that like you're forced down a straight hallway. That's linear. I mean, you might need to go uh, to dungeons in a specific order, but I don't know if I'd necessarily call that linear because you're still free to explore the rest of the world and find hidden items and find your different shops and. You know, explore. 
I don't really consider Link to the Past a linear game. Yeah, definitely not, Micah. Hell, you might even be able to sequence break the dungeons if you want. I don't remember. I haven't beaten that game since the early 90s. I do want to go back to that one very soon so we can stream it. Which one? Link to the Past. Ooh. Yeah, I've already done Zelda 1 and 2 on my channel, so I need to go to Part 3. And then Link's Awakening. And I have a Switch again. I could stream Link's Awakening, the remake. Well, you and I should uh, stream the whole thing of A Link to the Past sometime together. Well, the only issue with that is that, like... It takes too long. <laughs> well, you're. I can stream however long I want. You're not as available, you know, because your work schedule and all that stuff. So, we could, uh... like, three, four, five hours is good for you. Hey, Constantine, thank you for that donation, man. I appreciate it. Dear Austin and Brandon, what is your opinion of Resident Evil Game Boy game? The main Resident Evil oh. Game Boy? Uh, yes and no. It was canceled, but there's a working prototype. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a working prototype. I think it looks really neat, but I haven't actually... I haven't chosen to try it out on an emulator or whatever. I don't, And Brandon, I don't think, knows much about it. I actually, I'll have to give you... I'll have to send I'll you the link it. to the Stop, Stop Skeletons from Fighting episode. They covered, like, they covered that. Um, That's pretty cool, though, Sinead Resident Evil. I know, I know they made Torok Game Boy games. Resident Evil Game Boy games. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, so it's like a side-scroller. No, no. It's, uh... I don't know if it's in this episode. Yeah, it's this one right here. Check this out. Oh, that's actually... That's actually pretty cool. Yeah, I'll send it to you on Facebook, so you can, yeah. uh, and you can check it out later. Wow. That actually looks not too bad. It's pretty impressive. Resident Evil, yeah. I'll... Yeah, it's actually a real shame it didn't come out because it is impressive. It'd be like one of the most like impressive working Game Boy games. <clears throat> uh, Kyle, so yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Uh, this One of the guys on Twitch I follow has played that quite a bit. It, it looks pretty cool. Not really up my alley because I'm just not that familiar with Link to the Past anymore. Uh, so that would it would be a major problem for me to try to play through. But yeah, it looks awesome. It's crazy how they're able to get that to work. Yep, yep. I had it. I had Resident Evil 2 on the GameCom. Did you ever mess around with that when I had it? I don't no. Think so. Yeah. All right, let's try this part again without dying, without getting hit by. When a Resident Evil becomes a shmup. Oh god. Minus damn. the shooting. You gotta be. <laughs> this is so fucking lame, man. Why can't you just stop on them, Sherry? You're not that small. I've never died at this part in the game at all. This is like the first like this is like the first time I've ever died. Well, there's a first for everything, and sometimes a second and a third and a fourth. Or yeah. Let's that's... hope it doesn't get to that point, but you know, whatever. We've got 66 people in the chat there for you, Brandon. They're all rooting you on. Except for that, that one asshole that says, Die, 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 and downvotes the video. Oh, really? <laughs> he, he's going to help break the sale. <laughs> the Ghost Fish and Ninja Gaiden Xbox. I don't remember that. I beat that game about 11 years ago for the very first time. And that was the last time I played it. Can I give Sherry a gun? Oh, no, wait, she's a miner, right? <laughs> Dude, the city's on fire. Who cares? <laughs> Sherry needs to get a torch to get... Really? You get a torch in this? Yeah, I got a downvote or two on my Sunder Let's Play from today. I was like, who downvotes Thunder? Bastards. There's probably someone that wanted uh, another Castlevania video. I don't know. 
Sherry needs a torch to get rid of those cockroaches. I've always just uh, ran in a tunnel like a madman. Oh, a torch. Yeah, okay, okay, yeah. I get it, I get it. It's probably from like, down here. Can Sherry actually get a torch? Really? I've always just ran through that whole tunnel. I never really uh, actually gathered a, a torch for. Like one of these things right here. No, just keep playing, Brandon. Well, I don't even know if he's like goofing or what. He could just be for all I know. I have no idea. Just keep going. Oh no, see, if, if Sherry stops, if you run too fast, she'll stop, so you gotta walk back and you gotta get her. No, no, I mean the part where she's by herself. I'm not talking right here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You need to watch the Sumner video. You should, Crestline. We actually don't have many views on it. These last couple of Let's Plays haven't gotten a lot of views on Saturday, which is kind of weird. Usually, a lot of people, well, a lot of people in relation to my the rest of my content usually watch them but my holy relics video is actually it did okay but I barely got any comments on it a lot of people watching but not saying anything yeah not much I can do about it come on let's get out of here you beat the Japanese Resident Evil 1 on Saturn nice Oh, don't... Okay, get out of there. You did a button combination. Just keep hitting B. Yeah, keep hitting B. There you go. Yeah, there's a hotkey. Yeah, and you did the hotkey by accident. <laughs> Omri appreciates the Sunder videos. Hell yeah. Then you should post a comment on that video saying that. And then other people can upvote it. Because they feel the same way. <laughs> I hate to sound desperate, but my videos need comments if YouTube's gonna recommend them to other people, but no one comments. So. Yeah, if my channel's ever gonna grow, I need that interaction on the videos. I know it's kind of a shitty thing to say, but it is what it is. YouTube's a pain. <laughs> Yay, YouTube. Uh, they should show up in your feed if you're actually clicking on your subscriptions tab. Stop using your homepage feed because it's not a reliable feed. You need to use your subscriptions tab. And if you scroll down for all uploads today, on Saturday, you will see it. Or it might pop up from late Friday night depending on where you are in the world. Um... What the hell? How did you not die from that? This game is schizophrenic. Resident Evil 2, schizophrenia. I mean, you probably weren't looking hard enough, Kazuya. Kazuya. You probably skipped over it. And look, I'm Yeah, I mean, I'm looking at it from a side fine. panel and I see it right there. Uploaded 22 hours ago. Nice. Oh, that's so yeah, cool. it's way down on the list because it was posted at like 1 a.m. my time. If you subscribe to a lot of channels, then it's got to be way down on the list. But you said it doesn't even pop up on the list, which you were wrong about. Gotta teach you guys how to YouTube. Jeez, like I gotta teach you guys everything. How to YouTube... How to stop spending so much money on retro games when you can just buy flashcards. How to get Sherry through the cockroaches. <laughs> How to not get Sherry through the cockroaches. 
great place to pass out, right? <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, make a tutorial on how to use YouTube. <laughs> one of the guy, one of the regular viewers in the live streams, and you know who you are. I'm not going to say your name, but posted a comment to one of my recent streams saying, I am so stupid. I can't use emulators. I don't know how. Wah, 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 wah. Woe is me. And I responded like, dude, Using loading a ROM in an emulator is about as easy as opening a Word document. And he says, I don't even know how to download an emulator. I'm like face palming as I'm reading this comment. Hey, thanks, Tiny Philistine. <laughs> and it seriously get the point of this is it seriously got me thinking about making a tutorial about how to download an emulator and run ROMs in it. The master like as customer. stupid as it sounds i figured it out at 14 25 years ago like it's not rocket science and it's just even easier now than it was back then here here's a tutorial okay you go to an emulation site you want to know how to do this you go to google and you type emulator specifically a platform that you want an emulator for so how about this NES emulator? You want to play NES games on your computer? NES emulator in Google. Guess what? Your first or second uh, search result will probably be an emulation site that has an NES emulator. You download said NES emulator. There's usually a couple choices. Download whichever one you want. Download five of them. And then you want to load a ROM into it? Go back to your friend Google, type NES ROM, R-O-M, Rob, Oscar, Mike, in case you were wondering, you know, not R-O-N like Ron or Ronald or Ronnie. And, you know, your first or second choice might be a good choice. Although you got to be a little aware of, you know, ROM sites because they might have advertisements and don't click on those. They can lead you to malicious sites. It is what it is. I mean, hey, this stuff isn't strictly legal. But you know what? You just pop a few words into Google, you click a few links and that's it. And then you extract everything into the same folder and then you open up your emulator go to open rom or load game or whatever the fancy terminology is fancy schmancy emulation speak or be like and a, then before you know it you've got ninja gaiden running or, on your computer that's it <laughs> or it could be like akira and do the dab so shiny philistine says uh here's a fiver it might come in handy if you the master of roaches take it with you <laughs> or pretty soon it'll be the, the master of spiders. It's not that hard, guys, by the way. I mean if you're gonna if you're gonna berate yourself that much, I don't even know how you even got your computer to turn on. I you I don't even know how you're on the internet. How you're watching this stream right now, be it live or on the archive. It, it's a miracle you're even this far, if you really think you're that dumb. But let me just say you're not that dumb and quit making up stupid excuses to make yourself look that dumb because you're not that dumb another spy sent by umbrella right? another spy you must be as dumb as that guy that can't figure out how to download an emulator husband then you must be a net Mary's mother what? To the dab. Wandering around alone in the sewers. <laughs> like Akira Kazazu. Cheers. Kazuya. Akira Kazuya. Akazuya. Yeah. Do, doing here? do the dab. William will be after her. <laughs> William? Actually, that's a, not a bad idea, Kazuya. I haven't looked up emulation stuff in a long time. Like wikis, I mean, things like that. But there probably are really good wikis yet you can go to. Uh, they'll tell you like the best emulators and whatever. This is the best cinematic they in the whole game. They probably exist. It's sheer perfection, my precious G virus. No one will ever take you away from me. There he is, the 
So you finally come. Doctor, we're here to collect the G-Virus sample. Sorry, but I won't just hand over my life's work. You might hit the sample. You might have hit his voice box. Okay, <laughs> he sounded like a robot. William. Oh my. Hold on, darling. Hey, Professor. I've heard it's great. 60 FPS, 1080p. Maybe even light, even higher. Alpha team, have you retrieved the sample yet? Roger. Don't tell me he injects himself and he turns into Tyrant or someone else. Or am I getting too far ahead of myself? He, um... The big guy with the, with the eyeball on his arm? Mm -hmm. That's him. Okay. Waiting for the Aussie gets pissed at, at chat. Super chat. Super chat. <laughs> That's him. He kills the whole squad. What, what is this thing? Fire! Fire! Son of a... I can't say shit because it's bad writing. No. Ah! <laughs> In the remake version, that cutscene is flawless. So those rats were the carriers of the virus? As a result of his virus induced transmutation, William should have lost any prior memories he had as a human by now. I tried to save him, but I'm afraid it's already too late. Turning into a regular zombie isn't nearly as fun as turning into a mega ultra crazy zombie. <laughs> Hyper 2 Turbo Special Edition. What are you trying to say? The bodies of individuals with non related genetic coding are likely to reject the embryo. Yeah, the remake turns it into more like, you know, top tier horror material as opposed to like B tier schlock sort of. Mm -hmm. I mean, they did what they, they could at the time with this, you know? Everything is so intense in the remake from what I've seen. I've, I've seen a bunch of people stream it. Brandon's played through it several times. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I played it probably um, twice with uh, Claire and, and Chris. Well, uh, well, I've also been in the, um, all scenarios with Hunk and, mm -hmm. and Tofu and all of them. Mmm, lots of herbs. Herbalicious. <laughs> We got some blue herbs to go with your blue blood. And some green herbs to go with your green blood. Depending on the game mode that you pick. Alright, see ya, Andy. Alright, Andy. Have a good night.
Hey, Constantine, thanks for commenting on my Sunder video. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Man, that's be pretty great. cool. It'd be great to have a game dedicated to Hunk. I actually think I remember seeing you deal with this back in the day. We're gonna give him. We're gonna give him. We're gonna get. We're gonna give the alligator a bad day right now. Ooh, tasty. Nice. <laughs> He's had a bad day. <laughs> Alligator dental plan. <laughs> no, you kill a vector, you bastards. Alligator is now vector. Wake up, Sherry. My stomach. It hurts. Don't worry. You'll be fine. Come on. Let's go. There he was drinking that sewer water. <laughs> oh man! So where are we going next, Brandon? What's what's happening here? We are heading to the laboratory. Actually, we had to go through the warehouse first, and then the laboratory, which is not long due. So, uh, how close are we to the end of the game? Let's oh, so get the warehouse and the laboratory, and that's it. That's pretty much it? Okay. Yep. Come on, run. Follow me. So you gotta walk, or else Sherry will, uh. Or else she'll stop. And it's crazy how fast uh, time's been going this October. It's hard to believe we're already basically into our third week of the month. Halloween is what, like next um, next week, or do we get to next? Or it's two weeks from now. Yeah, two weeks from today. God damn it, Jerry, <sighs> get over here! It's crazy. Yeah, so it's uh, actually it's gonna be the 18th in just uh, an hour, not even an hour. I've done multiple Let's Plays. I've doubled up my live streams this month. And I got work early in the morning, but I don't care. Because... Seriously? I thought you were trying to uh, schedule it to where you go in later. Well, Why we you had a, uh, a guy who's ill. Quote, unquote, ill. Quote, unquote, Is he ill. the same guy that's always, like, calling out? Yeah. Yeah, oh, jeez. But honestly... I hate working with people like that, man. But, you know, it's all totally worth it, because this Resident Evil 2 stream I've been looking forward to for the whole month. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Come on, Sherry. Let's go. What are you I'll doing, be, Sherry? I'll be back. I'll be back. Sorry, Claire. I just had to spin around in circles real quick. That did it for me. <laughs> we got tons of handgun ammo. Oh. Oh.
big ass spiders, just like in the first game. <laughs> That's some huge spiders. They definitely quite changed. Can we make it? Oh, yeah, we got it. Nice. Yeah, and then they made Resident Evil 4 where you never want to not shoot. <laughs> yeah. You pretty much want to mow everything down. We're making pretty good time, actually. This is definitely a lot faster playing than, than I've ever played through at home. You know what? This would have been interesting to play, um... Without the expansion pack, I wonder if it runs at three, 240p or 320 by 240 without the expansion pack, or if it still runs in in the high res mode. Uh oh, I need to see if I can find a jumper pack and. Uh... Uh, the merchant. When when uh, you know I am the merchant when I'm at work, I have a bandana around my mouth. I'll tell <laughs> customers who're walking in. Oh, this is true. I actually. Uh... Funny story, I was like near, not near the end of the game, I don't know, probably three quarters of the way through the game. Ran up a set of stairs and shot the merchant thinking he was a zombie. <laughs> and he didn't respawn for the rest of the game. I was kind of pissed off. <laughs> Resident Evil 5 is just pure action. I haven't played part 5. We're gonna need that. Micah says, we don't talk about Resident Evil 5. What are your thoughts on Resident Evil 5, Brandon? It's a good game. I'll accept the part where the zombies hijack tractor trailers and you gotta shoot the zombie from running you over. That's the only thing about Resident Evil 5 I don't like. Other than that, it's a good game. Some parts are a little too unrealistic because zombies taking over vehicles. It's like... Mm. I mean, Resident Evil 4 got kind of over the top at points too. True. I mean, like the quick time events where you're like mashing the button to outrun a boulder that's true. like 20 times the size of you, but yeah. it's something like the over the top boss fights. That's true. But it was still more grounded overall, you know, like having to deal with chainsaw guys and hordes of enemies, mm -hmm. you know. I heard Resident Evil 6 is just dumb. <laughs> it's good for Leon's campaign. Yeah. Because it plays like a Resident Evil game. Or at least, I think it does. And, uh... Xavier says, Resident Evil 5 is good with co-op. End of story. He'd say, Resident Evil 6 is good with co-op as well, but solo play is boring and whack. Hmm. Resident Evil 6 is dumb fun, but stupid story. <laughs> dumb fun. Alright, let's gear up. And save this for the final boss. And we will go ahead and...
Uh, Brandon doesn't really care for Resident Evil 7 that much. I mean, that's kind of in a, a league of its own. It's very different from the others. It is. I have uh, friends at work that are all like, Oh, this game's awesome, this game's awesome, but they have no familiarity with the original Resident Evils, you know, so... Where are those? Alright, so we're gonna need these, we're gonna need these. We have one ink ribbon to save. Let's get a whole bunch more. Got one. Alright, cool. We are good for this next fight coming up. Turok 3, I think Brandon played it. I played just the first bit of it. I wasn't really... I didn't think much of it. Yeah, Turok 3 is alright. It's definitely one of those games that I feel like should have gotten the PC treatment. Because Turok's 1 and 2 came out on PC, and they were much better playing games on PC. And maybe if Tarak 3 was on PC and I got to play it that way, I would have appreciated it more. Lost in Nightmares. It's from Resident Evil 5. Have you played that? I guess it's like a side game. I haven't actually, no. Uh, Brandon hasn't played Illbleed. Maybe you should ask him if he's played it first, Constantine. <laughs> and, and I'm just going to be blunt. Brandon hasn't played nearly as many games as I have. So you might be able to ask me, but you might not be able to ask Brandon. You're going to get a lot of, oh, uh, I don't even know what that is moments. Yeah, I never even heard of it. It's a Dreamcast survival it. horror game where you go. It's like this uh, demented amusement park you go through and your character... Like, these events will trigger as you're walking through uh, parts of, you know, um, this amusement park. And, like, I guess you can get scared or whatever. And it's, it's, I don't know, it's hard to explain. It's pretty crazy, though. I'll check it out, though. It sounds, uh... We should actually uh, maybe mess around with that sometime on a live stream. That would be fun. Yeah, yeah, sure, we do that for you. Do that sometime. Yeah, no, I'm not. I'm not trying to give you a hard time, Constantine. I'm just trying to clarify because Brandon Brandon plays games. He doesn't play games full time like I do. He plays them to wind down after work, basically. Yeah. You know, he yeah. he does play a lot of games, but he doesn't play nearly as many as I do. He works on music and stuff like that. I actually have a link to his music YouTube channel um, in the description. So he does a uh, I love music. heavy metal. Um, that's his primary focus. Video games are kind of secondary as like a, a means to chill out and relax. He's always been a big fan of Resident Evil, Final Fantasy. We grew up playing games together. 8, 16-bit, 32-bit era. My stomach. My stomach hurts. Um, uh, no Katana, but I tried it on PC. Which is basically the same thing. Yeah, it's good. Hurry before the embryos pupate. All right, so now we're at one of the cool, cool fights in the game. Good beats us a little challenging a little bit because he is pretty strong. A sub boss fight. Rah! Hey, buddy. <laughs> oh, yeah, that feels good. Oh, man. He's my, my next door neighbor.
Oh, shit. Retro stuff for your Polymega. No! Don't! Don't do it, Micah! No! But yeah, that's cool, man. Shadowgate's a fun... I, I love Shadowgate, man. Oh, and here's an interesting fact. Years ago, when I first beat Resident Evil 2, the final boss, I beat the final boss with just the handgun. Because I, I, I screwed myself out of ammo and everything else. All I had was like 100 shots of am handgun ammunition and a knife and some healing. Sherry. My first time I ever beat Resident Evil 2. Years ago. Oh, so Lost in Nightmares, Xavier says, uh, that was DLC for Resident Evil 5. So you probably didn't play that, Brandon. Because you didn't get any of the downloadable content for that game, did you? No. I didn't, you don't usually do DLC. I still need to play the new Shadowgate remake that that they made years ago, or that came out a, couple, a few years ago, because I really love Shadowgate. I mean, I was a huge fan of the, the NES version. So I used to watch you play it all the time back in the day, and it was a great game. And the Uninvited was another great one too. I enjoyed right. watching. Yeah, I hear you, Micah. The thing is, like, we don't know if the Polymega is really going to be all that great right now, sure and what the compatibility is going to be like. So, like, I don't know. Thank you. It's kind of expensive for what it is, and uh, it's one of those things where I'd like wait and see personally yeah, instead of investing up front. Spent much time with me because of their work. And just I don't know, retro games have gone up in price so much. It's just I don't. I don't know. Finally have someone to rely upon. I don't usually implore people to collect games anymore these days, because it's just... It's gotten absurd. But hey, you know, if you want to buy games, it's your money. I try to tell people to go the flashcard route these days if they can. As soon as I found the antidote for you. You can get that real hardware and then do flashcards. But, I mean, probably Mega, yeah, we'll do Saturn. That's nice. We'll do some of those CD-ROM consoles, but... My big question is, will you be able to use ISOs, and will you be able to, you know, load ROMs onto an SD card, so... Now, if you can buy it and just load up ROMs without having the actual cartridges, then... Okay. It seems like a decent value, then. But if you can't, then it seems very limiting for what you pay. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, I want I want more details when it's fully released. Which I I don't know, is it still going to happen later this year? What's uh what's the uh what's the status on that? So do we need the valve handle? I think we don't. Do we need any of this stuff? I don't think so. Uh, yeah, we should be good for these uh, couple of parts coming up. Okay, shipping early next month. Well, I'll be interested to hear your thoughts on it when you do get it. But I'm more interested in the, um, the jailbreaking aspect of it. Yeah. I don't know, I just think for a lot of people, if you're... If you've already got physical games, like, you'd probably just have the original hardware already anyway. But, yeah. <laughs> yes, I've seen the Game Gear Mini, yep. So we're at the final part in the game. The, the Umbrella Underground Laboratory. It is puny game, Eagle, yeah. It's definitely a novelty. Um, not one I'm particularly interested in, unfortunately.
if they made the Game Gear Mini about half the size of a regular Game Gear, loaded like 40 to 50 games on it, like the Genesis Mini, I would have bought one day one. Because I love the Game Gear, but I'm not paying 50 bucks for a device that's barely usable with only four games on it. So. Hey, Firehawk, thank you very much, sir. Enjoying the stream, fellas. Cheers. Nice. Cheers to you, man. Thank you. Thank you for thank you for watching the stream. We enjoy people Explosion watching. Explosion in three, two, one. 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 Well, where do you see that? Uh, one. 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 Jesus Christ, how long are you going to take? I'm waiting for my alert box to pop up. <laughs> oh, there we go. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, okay. That's what you mean. Uh, yeah, thanks a lot, Firehawk. Much appreciated, dude. Yeah, it even comes with a mic magnifying lens, Carlos. I think it comes with one. <laughs> Luke Morse did an unboxing video of like four different models of it. Um, I think last week. Either last week or the week before. It's it's cute, I'll give it that. And it's funny. But, uh, are you going to actually use it? Mm. With its size, it's more like shelf fodder. It doesn't seem like something you're going to actually want to play on. Which is a shame. It's a missed opportunity. We got the fuse box. Now we can regain power. Dreamcast Mini? Yeah, I think that'd be a little difficult to do. Well, I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. Is there a way, secret way of playing the Game Gear Mini on a TV? No. Yeah, Shiny Felicium, and that's exactly how I feel about it. It's a novelty item. If they put more effort into it and made it an actual item you'd want to use, that, like I said, I would have been all over it, and I think a lot of other people would have been all over it, too. Like, imagine a modern game, like, a uh, Game Gear about half the size, with a better screen, because every any screen nowadays is better than the screens I used back in the day for Game Gears. Bunch of ROMs. Have a USB port on it to charge it, and you know, um, while also making it hackable, <laughs> enabling hacking, and you would have had a home run, man. I would have, I would have pre-ordered that. I don't even pre-order stuff. <laughs> Yeah, are naked zombies coming up? Oh, shit! <laughs> naked zombies coming up soon. <laughs> That's like the Resident Evil... Ah, oh, are you serious? I forgot all about that one liquor. That's crazy. That's like mutated liquors, too. That's a good thing I got. I brought that because, man, that's a smart move. I like that. Good job, Brandon. Oh, yeah.
<laughs> uh, we got plenty of healing, so. Miso Mama, you are super late. Miso Mama was like hiding like Patchy. At least if we have one healing, it's good. And bring this. Because we need to save all of that. Alright, cool. We're good. You weren't on time, aka you were having a real life? I mean, I don't see that as a bad thing. Sucks for my YouTube stats, but I mean, I'd rather you have a real life than uh, sit on your butt watching me, or more, spe more specifically, Brandon play Resident Evil 2. Are we drunk gaming? No. Uh, Brandon did buy this Austin East Ciders. Yep, it's blood all orange cider. It's Austin's new beer. Uh, definitely not drunk streaming. I only had one. He's on his second, so I, I wouldn't. Think this is my uh, think third, fifth. What? No, it's not. It's my fourth. It's definitely not your fourth. That's my because it's a six pack. But that's my fourth. That's your first. And it's one more in the fridge. Really? Yeah. Wow, you counted through those? Well, they're not really that um, like that strong, you know. You were binging on an only in Japan channel. <laughs> Spyro fan? Uh, I haven't really played any of, the, any of the Spyro games, and I don't think Brandon has either. Did, did you ever play Spyro the Dragon? Very, no. very little. Okay, I didn't think so. Yeah. Not enough to really make any uh, judgment about the game, you know. But I'm sure it's a fun game, though. Looks fun. You didn't get notifications. <sighs> YouTube, why you no notify my sub subscribers? I can't talk right now. I'm tired. I want to go to sleep, Brandon. Hurry up. <laughs> I gotta wake up in six hours for work, too. Do you really? We both do. Oh, yeah, I work early on Sunday, remember? <laughs> <laughs> Sunday's my long day too. It's my twelve-hour day. Yeah, I gotta be. Uh, I gotta be at work at seven o'clock too, so it's okay. Yep, that's when I start. And that you killed William. I'll never forgive you for that. <laughs> Wait. I've just prepared a sample of the G virus, and this time, no one will take it from me. This is the most significant piece of research my husband has ever left in my hands. Stop it! Sherry's in serious trouble. William implanted her with his embryos. There's no telling when they'll pupate. And if that happens, then Sherry won't. Won't? Uh, what? well that, Miso, or making sure you've got William. all your options selected when you click the bell. Holy shit! Hey, baby. Hey, baby. William, <laughs> you're alive. I kill you. Off screen. <laughs> you don't even get to see it. Uh, William is still alive. He's so if you click the bell, you have to off. make sure it's set to all. Jerry, if you set it to personalize, it's not going to give you all the notifications. I, I have detailed information. Yeah. That's the issue, is you have to make sure it's set to all, otherwise it's not going to give you all the notifications. That's for all you guys out there that like to have your notifications on. Save my daughter. 
and tell her your son I is into doom hell yeah i don't believe you miso mama i don't believe you no siree i do not believe you why is my blood transparent this looks really weird the self-destruct sequence has been activated repeat the self-destruct sequence has been activated this sequence may not be aborted all employees proceed to the emergency car at the bottom platform <laughs> Fight me. <laughs> Get one of these guys. All right, let's save it and let's finish this up. Take out that. The music in this game is so good, man. Leon, you made it. Can see you on the monitor but never mind that right now leon you have to go back and get sherry for me i left her in the security office please you must save her wait a second what are you gonna do where are you going i still have a few loose ends to take care of i'm counting on you Brandon, were you a little perturbed that the scenarios in the remake didn't line up? Yeah, in a way. Well, actually... Yes and no. I mean, there was, like, pros and cons. They both felt like the same kind of game, in a way. Versus in, in this version, it's like two separate scenarios. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. yeah. I think we already came through here. Yeah, this is the next one we gotta go through. No, we're just doing one scenario. <laughs> yeah, I wish, but uh, Brandon has to wake up early. I mean, I gotta wake up early too. I shouldn't even be streaming this late, technically, but <laughs> we're limited on time. That'd be a really long stream because you get you gotta think it was like three hours for. One scenario plus another two and a half hours, so another one plus again to play. Hey, that tickles. Uh, I went through the wrong door. <laughs> that happened to me in Castlevania Curse of Darkness a lot. Go through the wrong doors? Oh, yeah, but then again, everything looks the same in that game. Miso Mama says, hi, Austin's bro. Hey! He is my bro. Not a bro bro, but an actual brother. Like, an actual sibling. 
Multi kill. Multi kill. Headshot. Ultra kill. Mega kill. Rampage. Is Sorry, the... channeling my inner Unreal Tournament. Is... I need to play some of that again. So this is something about Scenario 1 and 2. If you're playing on Scenario 2, this... or never mind, you had to go through the... We're not gonna go into that detail, but... There's a computer you sign on to, you log on as a uh, guest, then you come up here put your handprint on. Then do the same thing with uh, with Leon for the second scenario and... Co -co 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 combo breaker! That's why right, it's more like Ultra Combo. Ultra Combo! Kilimanjaro! I don't know why I'm saying that! <laughs> you can do the COVID bubble thing. Yeah, we should probably be a little more careful about that, but like my our my family and a couple of my friends haven't really been adhering to COVID standards. Like I had my friend Edon over here and we were both like, yeah, I, I don't know. We're probably both fine. <laughs> Just hanging out playing video games. And then I go see my parents. And then Brandon's here, like, not, he's like a foot apart from me. <laughs> I think a lot of people haven't been taking it very seriously because we've been in lock, like, not in lockdown, but we've been in the, the pandemic state for so long that, um, well, I don't know, you know what I'm, I don't even know what to say. It's just specific individuals I hang out around, like Edon, Brandon, my parents, that's about it. I haven't really caught up with anybody else. And of course, when, when I'm out in public, we're forced to wear masks. And I generally try to stay six feet apart from people out in public. But, yeah. They made a slight change uh, for the palm reader room in the N64 version. They added a hunter corpse there. And load up on booze, it kills everything. <laughs> hmm. I should go to Maryland and buy some grain alcohol. That'll kill everything. <laughs> Including my good bacteria in my gut. <laughs> A Carmen six foot stick. <laughs> Did they do that in more recent South Parks? I haven't watched that show in so long. I used to watch a lot of South Park back in the day. <laughs> I remember South Park. South Park was good stuff. Hello, I'm from the United States. <laughs> They did do a six foot <laughs> stick episode. That's awesome. <laughs> ah, naked zombies. That's kind of like the uh, iconic staple for all Resident Evil. Yeah, fuck I don't you. remember naked zombies in fuck Resident Evil 4. All. You don't want to get those herbs and use them? Might not be a bad idea. <laughs> yeah, we're safer to go over here. Really? Yeah. You don't have loads and loads of ammo you can unload into them? No, see, naked zombies, they uh, respawn, so you don't want to load ammo, uh. or else they're going to come back. 
That's alright. That's why we stocked up on a whole lot of herbs. To feel great in. Yeah, I, I took up a part-time job at our local video game store. Uh, and I have to have a mask on the entire time, and I'm doing, like, heavy lifting and constantly moving boxes around and stuff like that. And when we do pinball tournaments, we have to have masks on at all times, too. So let me just tell you, playing pinball with a mask is not very fun. <laughs> Nor is working in a hot warehouse. But, you know, it is what it is. Now we're not required to wear masks if we're outside, but any if you're indoors anywhere, you have to wear them. Now like bars have exceptions. Bars will let you not wear a mask if you're at a table with a drink. It's like, uh And what's weird to me is like all these groups of people are getting together, like six or seven people around a, a table. Uh, all just with masks off, like spitting in each, in each other's faces. Like I, you know, while like I, I take it pretty lax with my brother and my parents and one of my friends, you know, I wouldn't go out. I don't like going out to restaurants and dining in. Like Subway is one thing if it's just like, you know, they only have a couple of tables, but if you're going out to like Red Robin or something and sitting down, there's a ton of people around you. I don't know, that kind of weirds me out. And then I wouldn't go out to a bar with friends and take my mask off. And if I would, if I do get something to drink at a bar, like when we're doing pinball, you know, I, I'm away from people when I'm drinking something. When you mix the herbs, it looks like you're going to light up and smoke it. In a way, it kind of does. <laughs> Resident Evil is very, very good. Yeah, it's pretty solid. I would say. Brian is the Resident Evil fan here. I love Resident Evil, man. Except, I, I, like, when I say I love Resident Evil, I'm a huge diehard fan of, like, Code Veronica, Resident Evil 1, 2, 3, and, and uh, Part 4. And the movies were not bad, too. Like, like the animated movies were really good. Alright, so now we're gonna go to the final boss. Because we got the Mo disc. Okay. We got the Ho disc. So we're gonna power up. Let's go ahead and get. We're not playing East Carlos. They're herbs. <laughs> not arms. I don't know if we even need that. But whatever. I think I think we're fine. Here's what I do though. We'll do this. Save it. Then we will get this back together. All right, end of the game we go. Bone says you don't need that card anymore. Well, it's going with us. It's going with us. <laughs> You're gonna have to deal with it. <laughs> Five minutes until detonation.
<laughs> Card carrying Claire. <laughs> Riven ink save system? Yeah, I think it's fine. It sort of keeps you from abusing saves too often. Adds, add, well, more so I think it adds a little bit of tension. What are your thoughts on it, Brandon? It's alright. It's alright. I kind of disappointed a little bit because in Resident Evil 2 Remake they didn't have ink ribbons. On the harder difficulty settings you do, but... Kind of kept that Resident Evil classic kind of thing going. The style. That looked like it hurt. Out of my way, man. You just got back at it. Is there a mode in Resident Evil 7 that brings back ink ribbons? I have no idea. Anyone out there in chat know? Thank you. You did it. Good job. That's Good the end. Yep, that's GG. it. And let's watch this cool ending right here. Not ribbons, but tapes on Madhouse difficulty. on the clock what the hell Sherry's unconscious I have the antidote if I give it to her maybe I should give it to her instead of talking about giving it to her Claire what's happening not now come on Sherry wake up wake up please wake up Claire you know Claire? you don't have to wait for me to wake no, up to give me the okay. antidote stupid Did she give her the antidote yet? It's over. She did it off screen. No. I have to find my brother. You're right. This is just the beginning. Ah. My God has protected you. It will always be with you. Claire. Sherry. And that's... That's it. Okay. That's all. Uh, Marcos wants uh, to know what you think of Resident Evil 2 Remake. Hmm. 
I haven't played it. I love it. It's scary, it's good, it's a step up. It, Capcom took their time to make a good game. They made a good remake. And it's been a while since they made a good Resident Evil, like, good game. In regard of reinventing, like, scaring you people. You know what you're talking about. <laughs> I think we're both too tired right now <laughs> to get all philosophical and deep about this. Well, the new Basically, he really liked the remake. It was good. Well, it's good. It's scary. The, the new Resident Evil games are not scary at all. They're boring. You think so? You didn't think 7 was scary at all? No, the 7th one doesn't even... Like... It's, like... Holy crap, T-Bone! Mm -hmm. Now Brandon has to come over again and do a Leon. Great stream, guys. Thank you, T-Bone. I know you looked forward to this one. A Leon B, so they want a scenario too. Scenario number two. Yeah. <laughs> Good help is hard to find. Oh, yeah. yeah, thank you very much, T-Bone. That's super generous, dude. I'm glad you enjoyed the stream. And there you go, Angel Studios. Which eventually became a part of Rockstar. Oh, Perfect Dark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll do Perfect Dark sometime. Perfect Dark's a fun game. I've been playing a game on Perfect Agent. There's a lot of cool tricks I can I can do in that game. Well, when are you going to come over and do Perfect Dark? I gotta brush up on it first. Well, you just said you've been playing it. Well... <laughs> no, I was playing it earlier this year. <laughs> it feels like yesterday. It does feel like yesterday. I've been playing it like six months ago and it feel like yesterday. Nah, I've never really been a fan of Left 4 Dead. No, or was it Left 4 Dead or was it the... Yeah, yeah. Thing. Left 4 Dead was a um, mostly multiplayer game on PC. And was on console. 360 PS3 era. And then there was a sequel. Uh, Left 4 Dead 2. Uh, for me, it's a cool game with a cool concept. But I don't usually do team-based stuff. I'm more of like a classic arena shooter. You know, I fly solo and shoot stuff. And dodge and weave. Uh, probably 360. I mean, we could do it in 64, but I, he's probably playing it on... Can you hit the save button real quick? Are uh, you playing... Number two? Yeah. Are you playing uh, Perfect Dark on the 360, or are you doing the N64 version at home? The uh, on, I'm playing the game on uh, Xbox. That's what I figured. Xbox One. Yeah, that frame rate is super nice. Uh, he, Brandon hasn't messed around with many Silent Hill games, as far as I'm aware. I played a little bit of the first one, but I heard great things about about it. So that's a no. <laughs> I, it's just it's just a different again. Kind of game. You should ask him if he's played it first to begin with. Like I said, he hasn't played as much. <laughs> Silent Hill's never really interested. I never gave really interest in the game. But yes, no, probably not. And I I, I remember dabbling with the room a teensy tiny -team -team bit when it first came out, and yeah. I didn't really get anywhere in any of the Silent Hill games. I played them for a few minutes each, and that was it. Fatal Frame. Never played. English hard for Kazuya. English hard. What about the Fatal Frame games? Yeah, I haven't messed around with any of those either. And I don't think you have. Have you played the Fatal Frame games? I never heard of I Fatal Frame. You haven't heard of Fatal? No. He hasn't even heard of Fatal Frame. See, guys? And I mean this lovingly. <laughs> That's playing. I'm just trying to keep you guys from asking, like, say, saving your 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 tired old fingers at 12 a.m. <laughs> from typing things that are going to be pointless to type. <laughs> 
Mm. Silent, uh, Rob says Silent Hill 4 was great, but a big pain in the ass. Loved Silent Hill 2. You want to try that jumper pack thing you mentioned, Austin? Uh, I don't know where my jumper pack is. So Fatal Frames I, is shame on me. Fatal Frame is good. <clears throat> I think I'll check into Fatal Frame sometime. After Breath of the Wild. They actually have one on the Wii U, and I don't know if it uses the tablet. The Fatal Frame is kind of like, I think it's a survival horror game, but you have a camera, and you you use it around the the your rooms you're in to spot ghosts. That's and cool. it's like, That's I cool. think it's like Japanese style ghosts, so it's like the creepiest. Nice. It's nice, you know, creepy as hell stuff. Japanese like. Um, Sorry, my brain's fried right now. Japanese ghost stuff is always way scarier than Western stuff. Like, apparently it's like... It's pretty strong horror. So, I've always wanted to, to see it. Uh, see it in action, but I don't own any of them, so... What is a Japanese game I bought on, um... The Wii one is digital only in North America, though. I think it's mm. like probably like 30 bucks. Maybe, maybe more. I don't know. Ugh... <sighs> Won't call it a night or uh, no, you can I'm uh, I the Wikipedia article Retro Simon says uh there are extra benefits with the RAM pack, but it's playable without it. It is definitely playable without it. Yeah, I don't know where I would have put my jumper pack. It's not here. Um, here, we'll do a we'll do this. Hey, oh, everybody! Yeah. I don't know. Let me see uh, if I have my N64 box in here. Hey, Patchouli! Patchouli! I hear something rattling around, so I might actually have it in here. Probably loose styrofoam. Oh, that's what was rattling. <laughs> Not the jumper pack. Oh, in the box. This is a uh, replacement analog stick. I think this might be the original analog stick. Yeah, I don't know where the jumper pack is. I don't have it in here. Which sucks. Yeah, this is the original N64 analog. That's I can see because it's all worn. It's not right here. Yeah, no jumper pack though. I should actually, I'm actually glad I found that. I might actually take apart a controller and put that back in because the replacements are garbage. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'm not a fan. This feels like my controller a little bit. <laughs> yeah, it's not, it's not great, but it's better than the replacements. Yeah, it's not great. I wonder if you can actually take these apart and actually look inside of it, maybe clean them. I don't know, I'm gonna leave this out actually. I'm glad I found this. <laughs> That's good. Uh, yeah, I would like to find where my jumper pack is because I'd be really curious to uh, 
you know, see what the I want to see what the visual differences are actually. But It's a me. A Nintendo 64 a boxer. My, this, this is my new face right here. <laughs> Take this card and fill it out. Send it in. Yeah. Look at this guy. He's got bold moves right here, man. Picking up Bowser and tossing him like a champ. <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah, you man, go. you really tore through those cookies. You know, cookie monster. Oh, I got two left. It's going. No, I'm good. Well, it's a bummer. Uh, <laughs> I tried. Yep, sorry guys, definitely no jumper pack. No jumper pack. My room is so cozy. Yeah, it's not bad. It's cozier when I have the better chair. But my cat is currently occupying it. That's Patchouli's chair. No one sits in it but her. <laughs> she won't sit in the one that I'm sitting in. It's always gotta be that one. Halloween! So well, thanks, Brandon, for doing this, man. Mm -hmm. People like it when you come by and you stream. Wish we could do this more often. If there's anything you ever want to stream on a Saturday, hit me up. Because people like like having you here. Let's ask Patchy. <laughs> it's good to be the queen. Yeah, right? The Digital Foundry video probably covers it. Uh, yeah, it might. I don't remember, though. I feel like that's, that's a detail I would remember. I'll have to rewatch it. We always knew who the boss actually was. Yeah. <laughs> and Zyklum goes, yeah, do it more often. It's a very fun stream. I enjoyed it. Next year we'll do Code Veronica. <laughs> How long do you think Code Veronica takes? Mm. At least probably five hours minimum. Mm -hmm. Probably four and a half. Okay. I could probably actually um, spend a little bit extra time in the game and get really good. And like save it six times and get like, so I only saved it twice and I'm at the Antarctic base already. So it's actually kind of an easier Resident Evil game than than some of the earlier ones. I think after you understand like, boy, like five shots to kill the zombies and use a knife to really conserve on ammunition, you really got to you really got to do that approach more in Code Veronica than any other Resident Evil game. The knife in uh, Resident Evil 4, I never really found any use for, because it's ammo. <laughs> I don't even own Resident Evil 5. Um, 
actually get you into Dark Souls, and then we can co-op Dark Souls instead of Resident Evil 5. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to do a stream of that again um, this October, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to because it's such a long game. It takes me, I think it usually takes me about 12 hours to beat the game. Maybe longer. We should do a stream where Brandon plays Dark Souls for the first time. <laughs> we won't see very far into the game. <laughs> but it would be... It would be fun. Probably not fun for Brandon. Yeah, I probably would die and be like, what the hell is this? <laughs> and then like, I would beat the first boss and be like, I kind of like this. And I'd be like, I don't want to give the controller up. And then I'd be like, 12 hours later, playing the game. Twelve hours later, if you playing the game, still stuck at the second or third boss. Yeah, still stuck at the second or third boss. <laughs> I would like to do some blind streams like that, where I bring in either like Brandon or Edon, and I have them play a game for the first time, and I try to coach them through it. Oh, that would be nice. That'd be fun. Oops. I do not mean to press anything there. I'm checking out what I got. Oh, nice. All six Mega Man Zero games. In one package. I actually have it on Xbox One, if you ever want to borrow it. Hmm. I just... I got the urge to buy it on Switch, because I have a Switch now. So... I got a Katamari reroll. Super Mario Maker 2. And then eh, Puyo Puyo Tetris. Puyo Puyo. Tetris. Fun, but a little redundant with Tetris 99. Still fun. You want to do a Mortal Kombat Mythology playthrough? No. Wait. No. Mythology is no. which one? The one where you're playing as Sub Zero and like a side scrolling platform. Oh, dude, nah, man. Fuck that game. <laughs> no one likes that game. They should call that game Mortal Kombat Freeze. And Arnold Schwarzenegger, Freeze. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense, but I'll, uh, I'll go with it, Brandon. <laughs> no, go with it. I remember. <laughs> well, I, I kind of get it. Sub Zero, he's Ice, Freeze, yeah. I watched the, uh, a speedrun of that game. That was, just, that was insane. And then I was like, well, I'm going to play as. You know, Mortal Kombat mythology. I turned it on. I was like, "How the hell do I get past this first part?" Uh, I don't own Mario Kart Live, Carlos. Uh, Edon brought that over today. I don't own that, but I I, I want to buy one. Still waiting for that Mortal Kombat mythology play. I mean, I might eventually tackle the game, but I don't really have. It's not high on my priority list because it's not something I really want to do. You know, there are a lot of different ways to torture myself. With video games, and that's one of them. Let's play Daikatana. I actually legitimately tried playing Daikatana on N64 a couple months back. Oh, really? And I got to one part I just couldn't get past, and I said, screw this game. Uh, yeah, yeah. was it on the... Uh... There's, like, this hallway of, like, lasers on the ground that you have to try to jump over, yeah. and I could not figure out in the life of me how to get past it. You have to actually, uh, there's a platform to jump above to get above everything really yeah well maybe i'll go back yeah. and try it again because like i didn't hate it because it was super linear i was like oh well this could make for an easy stream you know i like easy streams i like not working oh god metal mortal kombat special forces yeah <laughs> jacks they were gonna make uh more of those games but that one bombed so hard that yeah. they canceled that idea it's brutal. It's brutal and stupid. I like that. Yeah, I don't know about Shaolin Monks. My, my friend Ronnie brought it up years ago. I thought it was okay. I don't know. I don't own it, and I know it's gone up in price a little bit, so like, I don't know if I really want to buy one. I still need to actually, now that you mentioned, I still need to do the Mortal Kombat, Deadly Alliance, and Deception streams, but my Xbox took a dump, so I can't play them. Uh, I thought about trying to just buy the PS2 versions, but I haven't gone out of my way to do that yet, so. Zombie Army Trilogy, never heard of it. Mm -mm. 
Death Trap Dungeon PS1. I don't have it. Um, don't have it. Never played it. Beautiful Joe. I'd love to do that. I, I played it a little bit back in the day and I really enjoyed it. Oh, that's one of those games I'd like to try to beat one day. I'm actually pretty far in Daikatana. I got, um, I'm on like the fourth episode, fourth or fifth episode. It's a fun game. Oh no, I got way past. I got past the first level in Daikatana in 64. Daikatana PC oh. is, you need a patch for that game. There's like a community patch for that. Otherwise it's almost unplayable with the AI. They just get themselves killed over and over. It's so bad. <laughs> Well, I also do Okami, no, because I've never played it. But you played Okami a little bit. I talked Brandon into buying it. That's a good game. That's a good game. It's pretty, you got it on the Wii, right? It's a pretty wacky yeah. game. I like it. It's a. It's it's a, it's pretty deep. It's a pretty. I deep mean, maybe game. I'll borrow it from him sometime, and I'll try it. But you we know, stream it sometime. Too many games, too little time. That's my new slogan. Too many games, too little time. Okami is a pretty dark game too. It's not like a. Um, a happy kind of game. It's a you know, it's a pretty. It's got it's got a really dark, really dark story to it. It's pretty nice. It's on the Switch. Zombie apocalypse game set in the Germany 1940s. You run around, killing Nazi zombies controlled by Hitler. Word. Like in. Oh, well, you know, I have been playing uh, Eye on Fury lately, too. Yeah, he picked that up on Xbox One. He's been liking that a lot. I'm pretty far in that game, too. I'm like, uh... Episode 5 or 6. It's a pretty... It's a pretty cool game. I think it's pretty crazy. Yeah, God Hand's game. never gonna happen with the prices of that game. Although, I've got a friend that might... He, he'd probably be willing to let me borrow his copy... I've always wanted to play through it. But God Hand has like become a collectible now, so. Ion Fury, uh, it might be on Switch. I think it I think it is. Uh I'm checking right now for you. Uh no, Bastards only gave it a seven out of ten. <laughs> Whoever it was. Uh Yeah, it's on it's on Switch. Twenty five dollars. Yeah. Nope, I can't name my least favorite game of all time because there are too many bad games out there. Yeah, there's quite a yeah. lot of people that can name their least favorite game of all time haven't played enough games. Just like those that can name their favorite game of all time. Well, I don't know. I'll let that one slide a little bit. I'd say still haven't played enough games. <laughs> Can't do a top five either. I've played way too many bad games. Sorry. I'd have to do like a top. I'm not one of those YouTube channels, Casey. My top favorite or my top five least favorite games of all time. Even though I played thousands of games, so let me just go through that list of thousands of games in my head, which I okay. can't even do right now. I I would need a list in front of me, and I would need like a whole day to go through said list and analyze every option I'd to have... give you a real top five least favorite games of all time. I would have to do like a top fifty least favorite games of all time. I'd probably have to do like a top five hundred, and half of them would just be like really <laughs> shitty hacks and homebrews. <laughs> That I feel I'm just wasting my time with, or unlicensed titles from the NES days. <laughs> I, it's just... Yeah, I would have to do at least a top like sixty or seventy for that one. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah, it def definitely, <laughs> definitely a lot of uh, bad, you know, a lot of bad games out there. You haven't played enough games, KC. No offense. <laughs> But cool, I mean, if you think that game's terrible and it's your least favorite game of all time, I guess, cool. Thumb, thumbs up to that. <laughs> Bathroom break games. 
Top 10 bathroom break games. Uh, Tetris. Um, Candy Crush. New Super Mario Brothers. <laughs> Candy Crush? Do you have that on your phone? Yeah, I, I used to. Um, Vector Pinball on my phone. And actually, there's another game on here that I haven't actually played in a while, but I used to play it all the time. Well, Solitaire is a good Slidris. Bathroom. Slidris. You play Solitaire on your phone. That's a good bathroom uh, break. Pro game. Pinball as well. <laughs> That's a good game to play when you're on the toilet in the morning. Solitaire. Um, what other uh, boom, 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 boom. What other DS titles? There's a bunch of DS titles I used to play on the can. I don't actually play games on the can anymore. I try to get off the can as fast as possible. <laughs> because, like, I, you know, I like sitting down, but, you know, I'd rather be sitting down on, like, a couch or something. So I try to get off the can pretty quickly. Mm. Castlevania 3 is one of Simon's all time favorites. Hell yeah. That's a good choice, Retro Simon. Very good choice. Well, Symphony of the Night is definitely one of my favorite all time games of all time. Castlevania Symphony of the Night? Hell yeah. You don't know 31 years of games, Casey? Well, what's wrong with you? You need to do your homework. Now, that's my. That's your assignment for the next week, Casey. You need to pop in a week from now and then tell me. I don't know. You need to tell me that you've done research. Even Well, well Superman 64 <laughs> is definitely going on the worst games of the year kind of list. Which okay. one? Superman 64. Oh, well, yeah, a lot of people... I mean, Superman 64 is one of those games that's, like, actually broken, broken. It's... <laughs> I could see why people would put that on one of their, like, worst games of all time lists. Although, there's still a lot of games that are worse than that. Oh, yeah. Superman 64 is probably one of the worst games ever made that people actually had to pay full price for. <laughs> people got ripped off. I mean, because it was a $50, $60, $70 <laughs> game whenever it came out, probably. You know, N64 games were expensive. So I'm going to go to the store, I'm going to buy Superman 64. $60 later, what the hell is this? <laughs> I want my money back. Sorry, sir. <laughs> that game sucks so much. We're not going to give you your money back. <laughs> Name some games you love that were overall hated. Uh, I can I can definitely list a lot of those. Uh, I have to think about it. I have to think about everything because like I've played too many damn games. It's hard to just like just grab a bunch of games from my brain and just spit them out. Um, I mean, I like a lot of games that are just kind of like mediocre to a lot of people. Like I love Zoop. Zoop is a game, is a puzzle game. You guys have seen me stream quite a few times. I've got a couple videos on it. And most puzzle game fans from that era hate the game. I love it. Um, Scorcher is another one. Like, well, Scorcher actually got decent reviews on PC, but the Saturn version got very poor reviews. Um, I love that game. It's one of my favorites. Um, I love Soul Divide, which is a... Uh, you know, side-scrolling shmup by Psycho, and most shmup fans hate it. Um, there's there's a lot of stuff, actually. And again, it's one of those things where I've got to spend time looking at a list or something to, to jog my memory. So, Balls is a terrible game. Yeah, I think on 16-bit consoles it is, but I think the 3DO version can be enjoyable. It's much better looking and plays much better. Well, I don't know. Yeah, Duke Nukem Forever is kind of a weird one. I only played it for a few hours. I got to the area with like, uh, kind of like the Western style location, like the Canyon area with like the mines and whatnot. So I don't think I made it that far, but I didn't mind the first couple hours I played it. I didn't think it was... The, as bad as people made it out to be, but <sighs> but I also didn't beat the game either, so you know, take what you will from that. No, it was not Katana. It's much better on PlayStation. Saturn version has a. I mean, they both have frame rate problems, but the Saturn one in particular has way worse frame rate problems. I like Perfect Dark Zero unironically as well. I got it on launch day, and I actually, over the next year, I had spent time on it going back to it. 
on and off and I beat the game. Yeah, that's a pretty fun game to play. Yeah, I I don't know. That one is kind of a weird one for a lot of people. A lot of people don't like it, but I enjoyed it. It wasn't I don't think it was as complex with its mission structures, and I think that's what um people didn't like about it. And then also the character models, people make a big you know, they make a big fuss about how the character models look, but you know, it is what it is. It's 2005, you know, they're trying to, it's the best they could do at the time. So, um, I thought the gunplay was fun though. You know, yeah, I really enjoyed it from that standpoint. The visually, like the environments were actually stunning at points. I remember, on the ice the first ice level or snow level you get to it's like th maybe three or four missions into the game you uh joanna dark like repels up you know this this you know cliff and throws some dude off and then like that moment where you take control and you just look around it's like nighttime but you can i think you could see the moon and it's just like i think it actually still looks really good um I was like what I loved about like old older 3D games and and first person shooters in particular was that they usually advanced like the technology was you know it was put it was the technology was evolving getting better and you know like you know Unreal Quake 3 even Perfect Dark Zero Doom 3 Half-Life 2 like those games you'd want to just sit in there and just look at the environment like it was you were like this is amazing. Like PS2 and Xbox could not have done this or GameCube or whatever. Like this is current gen, next gen, whatever. It is amazing. And like, you just kind of sit in awe. At, like man, someone, someone crafted this and it's just, it keeps getting better. Like, uh, remember when we saw Nintendo 64 for the first time, Mario 64, it's just like, if my jaw could detach and fall on the floor, it would have, you know, oh, being yeah. up for the first time. And same with like the first time I saw Sonic Adventure running on a Dreamcast. I was like, it'll never get better than this. And well, that's the first time I, uh, seen like those wow moments are, are what made, uh, you know, the next generation of console hardware special or PC, you know, well, it's like super Metroid. Like when they came out, it's like, Holy shit. And Perfect you Dark know. Zero, I, I'm yeah. trying to give credit to Perfect Dark Zero in particular. Like, it did that at parts, you know. It's like, it didn't wow me at first, but there were some parts I got to, and I was just like, holy shit, this is amazing looking, you know. Um, And I don't get that as often with modern games, unfortunately, where I just want to sit there and, like, just appreciate the visuals because they're, like, they're... St Not that they aren't stunning, it's just that, like... The evolution has been so much slower over the last 15 years, whereas that PS2 at Xbox 360 era was a big jump, especially if you're if you actually were able to play in HD. That jump from N64 to PS2, huge jump. You know, the jump from 16-bit to 32-bit, huge jump. And it's just we don't have that crazy jump uh, anymore. Have I? played any of the 3d ninja guiding games i beat the first one a long time ago but i haven't played any of the others no um fear is good i beat fear crestline showing his love for tnt evolution which is a final doom mod yeah i know it does fear effect uh fear. fear yeah i have uh i've actually i actually beat the first fear t-bone I, I didn't mess around with two or three it was all right Definitely a creepy game with some jump scare moments. I've never heard of Cry of Fear, no. You don't have to ask it twice, Casey. I can see the chat perfectly. I have, I have eyeballs. And they're pointed at the chat. I do have eyeballs, so I, eyeballs, right? I think I do. I'd like to think I do. <laughs> my bad that's right this is why it's your bad <laughs> Clive Bar yeah Clive Barker's Undying was a really Clive Barker's Undying is interesting I, I actually meant uh, see that's another one I wanted to do in October but I started a playthrough of that like a year and a half ago and I never finished it I, never finished I got pretty that. far into it though 
I have it on my Windows ninety eight machine. I beat uh, I beat Knox though. Knox is fun. As much as I want to sit here and chill and chat, um, we both have to wake up for work in like five hours. So I think we should probably get out of here. Alrighty. So. That's a good stream though. Yeah, I mean, I'd love to just sit here and chat, but I love only working four days a week at my main job and having three days off. But I hate having to wake up early Sunday. That's one of the downsides to it. So, yeah, I can't stream until, you know, 6 a.m. like I used to. Yeah, no, thank you guys. No, thank you guys for checking us thank out. Thank you, Brandon, for, for coming out. You got it. No and problem. doing this for me. So, but, uh, one last patchy sighting. Go ahead and poke her. Here she is. Patrulli. Patrulli, patrulli, patrulli. I wish I could explain myself better in moments like these, but I'm so freaking tired right now that my brain's just not working. Patrulli. <laughs> there you go. There's the patchy. There's the patchy. Alrighty, guys. Thanks again for hanging out. Uh, I'll try to have the archive of this up probably Monday. Uh... Yeah, I'll have it up Monday, uh, so watch out for that. Oh, yeah, yes, Jules. <laughs> Did you think it was going to take longer to play through this game? One, one, one character? Hey, no problem, Carlos. Thank you. It's good to see you again. <laughs> Me, patchouli pokes back. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Thanks everyone that uh, you know Who came out to this to tossed in some tips. Society of Sin. We got Constantine, Shining Philistine, Firehawk, nineteen eighty eight, and of course the T Bone Saxman. Uh, thank you all for uh, pitching in. It's much much appreciated. Some of that's going to actually go to Brandon too. So, um, so Brandon will be very appreciative of that. He'll be like, oh, this was actually worth my time. So. But, uh, yeah, maybe I can, you know, talk him into coming back next year for some other Resident Evil. That'll be awesome. So Yes, we will. Um, and hopefully he'll be back, uh, you know, in less than a year for something else. Maybe Perfect Dark. Maybe something else. I don't know. Like I said, Brian, you're always welcome. And, um, you know, if there's anything you're playing at your home and you think that you might want to just stream here, knock out a quick playthrough, just hit me up. So, so you need good. to buy some merch eventually. Well, the merch isn't ready yet, Crestline. I've got a couple of test prints uh, on the way, and uh, uh, one of them shipped out. It was it was the T-shirt shipped out yesterday. So um, it'll probably be a couple weeks before I get the T-shirt and the hoodie. And if those come out okay, then I'll make them live, and I'll, you know I'll update people on YouTube. So yeah, you'll know Crestline when they're ready. They're not ready yet, but they will be. I, I want them to be ready early November, preferably. Yeah, I don't think uh, Teespring does hats, though. That's the weird thing. I'll, I'll have to check their site, but I don't think they do hats. I'd love to do a patchy hat. That would be awesome. Nope, never played Dead Space T-Bone. And I probably won't anytime soon. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I don't think Brand has ever played Dead Space either. No. No. Nope, nope, nope. All right, I'm going to stop answering questions because if I don't, uh, we're going to be here all night. So, <laughs> uh, if you guys missed my Sunder playthrough, uh, I'm going to post it in chat real quick because apparently some of you guys say that subscriptions are not working for you. Uh, so, let me go ahead and post that into the chat. It's a 28 minute playthrough. Actually, technically, it's less than that, you know. Um, but yeah, 25 minutes or so, I'd say. Uh, so if you want more to watch, feel free to check that out. Also, uh, you know, feel free to check out Brandon's uh, YouTube channel. I'll post that in the chat as well. Right there. If you like metal music. Sweet. Thank you. 
Yeah, it's pretty much all instrumental stuff, except for like one or two tracks. It's really good stuff. Uh, so please go check it out. Show them some support if you like uh, if you like some metal. Oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah. Alrighty, guys. I'll catch you later. Thanks again, Brandon. And to Ooh, everyone goodbye. out there, have yourselves a fantastic day or night. Have a good night, everyone. And wherever you are in the world. And until the next one, Take it easy. Oh, yeah.